uh, CPC. We met at the um, this last Monday at the uh, town meeting. We always meet prior to the town meeting in case anything comes up. Nothing came up, so we just opened and closed the meeting. So, David, trails? No meeting thus far. No? Okay. And open space? I guess we have no comments on that, although they've final, okay. finalized their plan. So, anything on Lakes Advisory at all? Nothing. I haven't received anything recently. All right. So, where do you want to go from there? Yep. Uh, well, speaking of open space, um, Planning Department is looking for um, a letter of support. So, I had sent an email with um, it was an attachment. I had it in a Dropbox. If um, at some point soon, if we can yeah. maybe look at it and decide, want to give them that letter. She's looking for it kind of in the near future, I guess. So, did anybody get a chance to take a look at it? I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to look yeah. at it. I didn't look at it in that form, but I've seen it because Carol's been carrying it around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's been asking me this and that, and this and that. So, but if you could all take a uh, look at it, I can resend it out too. And um, just get into Becky, and if we have a majority, we'll just send a note supporting it. Or if there's any input, um, go go back through Jean to Rebecca would be the best bet. Yeah. David, okay? Fine with me. I got through page 15, and I made some comments already to Jean. Oh, did you? Yeah. So that's, you know. I have to get through the rest of it. Yeah. Um, because one of the things that I want that I talk to her about relative to the open space is everybody talks about it as if it's the open space plan. <coughs> it's not the open space plan. It is the open space and recreation plan. And recreation is given very short shrift in the open space and recreation plan. And I think that that needs to be modified because it is not the open space plan. It's required by the state that we have an open space plan, but in the town of Sturbridge, we put it together with, the title even says, open space and recreation plan. Hmm. So we have to get part of it. We don't have one from rec doesn't publish a plan. I don't know whether they do or not. It's immaterial. What's material is that this is the open space and recreation plan. Okay. And each one of the committees, including the rec committee, according to about three paragraphs into the paper, indicate that all of the different departments have been contacted relative to this for their inputs. Yeah. But there is, there is not very much comment on the open space and recreation plan about the need for fields. And that is a dying need that a crying need that the people in Sturbridge have been talking about, even at the most recent town meeting. Mm. Right. So I would think that it would get some prominence in a revised seven-year plan. Not a mention, but a prominence. Yeah, I don't so know. I'm going to finish with it. I haven't gotten beyond page 15 yet. Okay. Other things have taken precedence, like okay. Concom. <laughs> why, why don't they separate open space from recreation and have two separate I, I have no idea. Or plans or I have no plan. idea what it's all about. But we had a plan that um, was finalized in 2017. <clears throat> Most of us got a copy of it. It's yeah. about yay thick, and it is the open space and recreation plan. Yeah. And so now they're revising it because the state insists. I, what is the reg? The reg says every 10 years, or is it every seven? Seven, seven I think. Because we have to have it. Done I'm not in sure seven that, years. but seven was when you ask when you're coming to the question. My mind said seven. It said seven, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I know that Gene sent out a notice back in December saying we've got to get it updated before next right. December because it's our seventh year, and it's every seven years. And we want it in the format that allows us to get grants. Yes, that's that's a, a big key to it. So. Oh, end of minor rant. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I have a couple requests for certificates of compliance. One is for 178 New Boston Road. This was part of the A and R lots. Um, it was part of the preserve. It was uh, DP file number 300-460. So um, Ross, I believe, I think that was who did a lot of those projects. So this is one of the houses. I did go out there. 
went through the orders of conditions. There were some special conditions because the fronts um, riverfront. So this is a picture I found on the site before. So they were allowed to remove some, a good amount of vegetation they had to replant and it is in the orders that they have to replant. So I added the special conditions as an attachment for their certificate of compliance. They're not supposed to disturb the stone walls. Um, wildlife habitat located in the front of the house is designated in the final accepted plans um, to be left um, undisturbed in a vegetated state for the um, perpetuity of the property. And then the typical no pesticides, herbicides. So I did go out there. Um, the whole front is all vegetated. They did have their plantings in there in addition to other things growing up because they have not been maintaining it like they're not supposed to. So, so it was all set. Is there fencing there? Not. No. no. Not this one. No. 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 I think that's the one of the other ones. Like there's one with the driveway where it had the concrete okay. on it. Yeah, not this one. Next one is DP file number 300 943 140 Lake Road and Mr. Radner's um, retaining wall along the shore. And that was completed um, late fall, early winter. So I worked with John a lot on that. So I helped him, you know, as he's moving forward with the project. So I was happy with how um, he did that and how it ended up. Um, came out really well. We vegetated the lawn. Everything was cleaned up really nicely. So um, didn't have any cons. Was that? Nice, nice. So, so I did go out there. He does have some ongoing conditions. Just the basic: no dumping, no additional alteration, no sedimentation into the resource areas. So, this one will be a complete. That one is a partial because it's only one of the lots. I didn't say that. So. Oh. Yeah, that was right during the good cold spell. December 12th. Got a few minutes, so have a couple um, small things um, under new business. We have um, an event request for um, Sturbridge Host Hotel. It's a Jaguar car show. I don't know if it was actually brought to meetings for you, but they have about 50 to 60 cars that come every year. It's like an all weekend event. Yep. They're going to park them in the lawn. Um, we we from what I found in the past. We've it every year. <laughs> yeah. For a long time, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's the same thing, the same proposal. Some of the cars were new when we started doing it. They're <laughs> <laughs> not now. Uh, yep. So it's just as a same thing that they've been doing in the previous years. We'd like yeah. to show the cars in the grass. So. I moved that we give approval for the Jaguar event taking place at the host hotel. Second. Discussion? Second. Yeah. Got a second. Dis any discussion at all? Yeah, a second. No. No discussion. Hmm? No discussion. Okay. All right. No discussion. All in favor? And then we have a request from the Society of Soil Scientists. This is through um, Art Allen. Yeah. They um, are asking to use Plimpton property. Um, to do a soil workshop class at the end of June. Um, they're actually, they're gonna make a couple spots available for town employees or board members if they're interested um, for this soil workshop. Well, since we found endangered species up there. Well, he'd have to check with them too. Um, and so what they would be doing is it would just be um, backhoe pits, they're four by four by four feet deep. They'd be opened in the morning of the workshop and will be closed at the end of the day. Topsoil will be separated from the subsoil and put back in order of excavation, seeded and mulched with straw. 
um, no backhoe operation within 25 feet of a wetland area. And he said that um, the backhoe can't um, use the existing trails. There'd be nothing going off, no additional disturbance. I did let him know about the natural heritage priority habitat and you'd have to check with them. Um, things like test pits and things like that are exempt um, from MISA, Mass Endangered Species Act review. So it, it might be something that they'd be okay with, especially if someone like Art was there when it was being done and he could scope to make sure no species were in the area. Um, when I worked there, we kind of did things like that. So I would just now, recommend Who is this for? This is what? This is for the Society of Soil Scientists. Yeah, yep. so we need to get approval from Opaken. Yes, they've already, um, Opaken couldn't be here tonight because they um, have their meeting tonight too, but I did forward all the information to them to look at. So that would be one of the conditions too, but I don't think that they have any concerns. As I make a suggestion. I'm fully in favor of it, but I think that we should ask Art Allen to give us a report of what they got relative to soil types. Yep. I think that would be interesting to add to the Plimpton property folder. That's a Because they are idea. going down four feet. Yeah. Did, didn't they say, when you discussed it the last time, didn't they say that people could go if they wanted to and observe? We could go. They're going to leave yeah. some openings for us yeah. to go yeah. for free. Okay. It's the end of June though, right? Yeah, I think it's June 28th or 29th, depending on the weather. I'm weather. available, so I'd love to do that. But June 28th. I'm going to try to do it. Ridiculous. Would you also send an electronic blurb out to the committee just to make sure that everybody's aware of it again? Okay. Yeah, do that when you when you summarize that Opacum is okay with it and okay. that National Heritage is, yep. is okay with it. Yeah with all, all okay yeah. okay then and, and I will put in our letter for him too that okay great they're gonna, we're gonna let him use the space here too for the uh, class before the actual workshop out there Good. too so should probably make them do it under the shed then they'd have to take the shed down in order to get it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they want to dig those soils yeah, they can take the asbestos with them exactly yeah yeah um, I've got a couple minutes we received the monitoring reports and all our conservation properties from Opacum. So um, Ashley put together a nice summary here that we will kind of both worked on in a little bit, but just kind of some of the um, bullet points of their observations um, when they did their monitoring work. So observations of the properties, you mean? Yep. Yep. Yeah. You have any concerns with compliance for the CRs, um, boundary issues? Yeah, the boundary issues were the same ones that that were on them when uh, Probably. when they approved <laughs> the, the <laughs> taking of them, right. if I remember correctly. I don't think there was anything, I mean, I'd have to go back through it too, but anything that required any type of immediate action that they suggested? Yeah. Uh, the AT, ATV activity in Plimpton? We sent out. Which has to be dealt with. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that is down there. We did um, send out letters to all the abutters. Um, it was like right before Anne left. Um, I mean, I think they notified us in the office. Glenn came in and, and yeah. advised of that, and I did send those letters out. So we did hopefully start to address that. But I could that they've cut back on the ATV usage um, on Long Pond. The stuff when a kid gets an ATV. In the neighborhood. Um, any other comments on it? this? Anybody? Riverlands um, violation with uh, removal of some stone walls. It sounds like storage of equipment on town property. Well, so I'll have to look at them a little bit who, more too. Who removed the stone walls? I don't know. Where's that note? That's. Pretty I don't see Riverlands. that. Riverlands. On number four. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Oh, it's, uh, second second dot. I just have to go back to the <coughs> report and pull that out. I don't know how that's worded. If that states that there's one would cons would be considered a major violation. With the remove, remove. Mm. Yeah, this oh. is regarding the butter violation. Yeah. 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 Remove all. Yeah. 
storage of, of the equipment was part of the approval of um, right. was agreed to. Well, I don't know if he's referring to our equipment or if someone, one of the abutters is storing some oh, equipment okay. or not, yeah. so I don't, I don't know. Okay. Uh, you haven't talked to him face to face on it? No, they just no. came in last week, last week, so we just decided to put a summary yeah, don't uh, for now, so. yeah, if there's anything that needs to be, you know, considered, don't don't ignore it. You know what I mean? Ask yep. them. Yep. Because they they may have something in here that they care about more. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, priority yeah. to address. We should get them to correct the language that they use on the last uh, bullet, though, Becky. They're calling it a fire pond cistern. Which one here under? Under the Riverlands. Okay, under the Riverland, the, the last fifth, bullet. The yeah. fifth one down, it says aluminum trailer skin, iron pin, Dowdy Farm boundary, and fire pond cistern. We all know that as being where the asteroid hit. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> right. I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you want me to read the, uh... Sometimes you and the boys have to walk up there, Stephen. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Are you all set? Yep. Ready to go to, um, 615? In, in the interest of saving time, the Sturbridge Conservation Commission will hold all public hearings tonight for work within a wetland, water body, or resource area and or within the 200-foot buffer zone to a wetland, water body, or resource area in accordance with the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, and Associated Regulations, and the Town of Sturbridge Wetland Bylaws and Associated Regulations. We will not be reading the newspaper ad. Prior to opening the first hearing for each project, the applicant is to sum submit proof of notification to abutters within 200 feet of the subject property line and proof of legal newspaper advertisement. If these items are not submitted, the public hearing will not open. Additionally, prior to the start of each public hearing, we will announce the location of the project, the applicant, and the applicant's representative. If any of the visitors have not legibly signed in yet, please do. Also, if any visitors are recording this meeting, please let us know. Thank you. All right, 615, notice of intent, DEP number 300-1007, George Vinton Road, BWC, organization and LLC replacement of two uh, culvert to provide access to, uh, to uh, completed storage project solar project uh, work is located in the riverfront bank bordering vegetated wetland and land underwater represented by Ames Foster Wheeler continued from uh, 517 gentlemen how you doing? Yeah. How are you? Good. So I, I could summarize the project briefly. Where we, sorry, Steve Herzog, Amec Foster Wheeler, and Ray Hanna Amoresco, yeah. BWC LLC. Okay. So just to give people a little um, history, of, very briefly, in 2013, uh, the commission issued an order of conditions for work associated with the solar project. Uh, in 2016, these two arrays were constructed and improvements to George Vinton Road were not made at that time in the interest of getting the arrays in before a, a, a state deadline. Uh, in 2017, BWC uh, applied for an Army Corps permit, the pre-construction notification. And due to some complications in, in uh, representatives of the project, the order of conditions was inadvertently allowed to lapse. So that's why we've submitted a new notice of intent for work related to replacement of culverts to provide along George Vinton Road to provide access, long-term maintenance vehicle access. So we had a site visit in May. Uh, at, at that time, we saw the intermittent stream culvert and the um, perennial stream culvert and the so-called mosquito ditch around a, f a failed culvert closest to the northern array. Some discussion amongst commission members and Mr. Hanna and myself and, and Art Allen as well, we determined that it would be beneficial for the whole wetland system here 
to replace the culvert that conveys the perennial stream Hobbsbrook with an open bottom box culvert. Meeting that way, we would meet the stream crossing standards, which is not what was in the original notice of intent or the previous order of conditions. And so, basically, swapping the two culverts and culvert it, replacing the culvert conveying the intermittent stream with a similar diameter um, round culvert that the, compared to the one that's present right there. Further, we thought it would be beneficial to open up the northernmost um, failed culvert that is. And has been ditched around to restore the natural stream flow of that uh, that stream. One last thing, we would also uh, have included in our, our request additional tree clearing in the wetland buffer zones on the south, uh, the southwest and east sides of the two arrays, to allow more uh, solar energy to reach the uh, the existing arrays. So, I'd be happy to. <laughs> Go into more detail or answer questions. Should we maybe go from um, start maybe with the tree clearing on each one and talk about those and then talk about the culverts? Just Can so we, we start with the culverts? Or culverts I first? Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so those are the details first there. All right, so this one. So the left drawing shows existing conditions <coughs> um, and the proposed pump around. You have a pointer up there too if you want to use it, okay. just so you know. Yeah, so, so this one is the failed um, four foot culvert at the perennial stream. Okay. Yeah, see. And this is the proposed replacement with an open bottom box culvert. I'd also like to point out that we observed on our field visit that this ponded area uh, upgradient of the crossing is being maintained by a series of boulders here and there is a drop before entering the culvert. So replacing the existing fail culvert with the open bottom box culvert uh, will not change, significantly change the flow as long as the, the boulders surrounding the downstream end of the pond are maintained. So the, the diagram shows that a temporary coffer dam will be constructed um, to prevent flow and backflow into the work area, and water be, would be pumped around during the, the period of uh, placement of that box culvert. What's the invert? The invert w will be as exactly as it is now. Which and, is what, the, and what is that? Uh, 573.97. Is that what was on the original plan? I, I believe so. I believe so too, because I did go back and. Wasn't that one of the questions that was asked at the previous meeting? Yeah, but that, no. Yeah. Yes. I think Ed asked it. Um, you know what? I think I pulled. It's not up to you, Becky. It's up to them. Please. 573.5 is what was pr previously proposed. Okay. So is it, yeah. So you guys are off by 0.47. But again. a couple years, it may have changed. But again, I think it's, it's important to note that, as we saw, and I've the water is being maintained upstream of the culvert. And I actually brought a photo of that area taken from the, um, the ponded area. It's not as especially clear, but you can see the boulder wall. And you probably <laughs> that the water level is consistent up to the those boulders, which is mm -hmm. several feet ahead of the. Uh, yeah, I'm not really. It's not. I'm not seeing them. I mean, this bowl is there. I, I don't argue that they were, but they underneath the. Um, well, if this is put in at 
at the um, 573.97, and I'll be happy. Yeah. You know, I don't have any problem with that. We can add that as a condition yeah. to ensure that. Um, one thing with well, the it depends on what the um, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Go, go forward. I only asked that question because I thought, thought that it was incomplete without that yes, uh, being mentioned. So yeah. go ahead. Uh, well, the, the diagram shows the remaining. As the, this pump around will be in place during the, the placement of the box culvert, then the road will be uh, placed over the box culvert. And as I said, this, the stones around the southern end will be maintained. Um, erosion controls, obviously, are, st are still in place right now on both sides of the road. But uh, the during the course of construction, um, an energy dissipator device at the bottom at the outflow will be placed and a filtration a filtering bag to ensure that no um, sedimentation occurs to the to the stream downgrading of the work area any questions on the um, you want to make comment from Becky what yeah, let's go yeah Becky. Becky you want to comment on this yeah, no, I, I don't have any comments. I mean, I did look at that and was wondering about the, the invert there, and as long as we kept that, because that was something that was of your concern. Um, I did give you a copy in your packet there with the email that Art did look at these plans and um, was content with this portion of the project. Um, and just want to remind you, too, that he was um, to be the environmental monitor um, on the project site, so we would continue that condition so he could ensure that, you know, these things are met when the work is being done. So I think we have that extra um, safety there with that. Okay. According to the plan, which one of the two is this on the list? Is it um, SD? SD is it SD1? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 That's okay. what the box culvert is. Yeah. David, <coughs> I saw the picture. Yeah. David. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right, next. I wanted to know if it was SD1. I've got a copy of that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to look at the no nope. the next? Let's ask questions about oh, this one okay. first. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's already. what I had to, to present. Yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to make the one more point that Becky already did that Art Allen reviewed this several days ago, um, and was satisfied with this. Okay. Right. Next culvert. Up. Up. How about the rest of the committee? We're going to go to the next culvert. We're going to let's ask questions about this culvert. And then about the next culvert, if you don't mind, Mr. Okay. Chairman. If you want to do it culvert by culvert? Yes, because then there's no confusion. All right, that's what I was asking before. Good. <coughs> Paul, you want to start, Paul? Um, no, actually, since I did not get a chance to look at the video. Okay. In the last meeting. I, yeah. I can't vote on it anyway. So, so all right. David? Um, SD1, according to your numbers, the 100-year calculation indicates that um, the um, carrying capacity is 549 CFS, and the existing capacity is 487 CFS. Do you actually feel that that is a significant delta in case we have something more violent than a standard 100-year storm in this era of global warming, when all of the water is rising everywhere faster than we ever anticipated? And I'll give, you, I'll give you the reason I asked that question, because on the, other, on the other culvert that you guys are putting in, the difference in CFS figures is better than two times. There's a real large gap. In other words, should it hit its max 100-year storm, oh, there's plenty of other options. But with this one, nada, about 2%. And I don't think that's significant. Secondly, when did the plan come in? Uh, I received my copy Wednesday. It, it came in Tuesday Tuesday. after Tuesday. our site visit. Okay. Yeah. So I received my copy Wednesday, which means Wednesday or Thursday, I'm supposed to read these on my computer because I can't come into the town hall. And you see the size of these prints. I have questions like this and I was not able to really go into what you provided us because there was not enough time. But I don't feel that the CFS for this culvert is significant enough.
because it barely meets the 100-year storm criteria. And that's by your own definition. I just want to, I just want to uh, interpret it. The original proposal that was approved on the orders of conditions was for um, a 24-inch pipe. So this is a, a big improvement to what was permitted before. Right, but if they had done the same CFS, they would have said the other one was way undersized and they would have had to improve it. Potentially, I think the plan originally came in with a, a four inch culvert pipe back with the original NOI and then it got reduced, so. Okay, <clears throat> I'm just questioning this one. No, I know. <coughs> That's my only question relative to that particular culvert. And as I said, I, I have not been able to go into all of the plan's details. <coughs> well, this culvert does meet the 100-year um, storm and it meets the state stream crossing standards. And as Becky pointed out, it's, a, it's an improvement over what was pre previously proposed. <coughs> I don't Steve. have any problems with this. Call. No, I don't have any uh, problems with it either. Okay. Okay, next one. Let's see. What is this? What are we, are we this calling is this? The, the, this is the other the culvert. Other so this is the intermittent stream. Um, that was further when we walked along that has a crushed stone box culvert 18 right. inch I think mm -hmm. this is what they're calling CAL V1 yeah right, is that right yeah. okay so this is an, the existing crushed uh, box culvert conveying this intermittent mm -hmm. stream during our site visit in May, there was no flow <clears throat> through here and very little surface water visible. So what we propose to do is take the, is replace that with a 36 inch diameter uh, culvert. Um, a similar work uh, routine, there would be a pump around, although it probably won't be necessary to do much pumping when we do this in the, in the, uh, in the dry. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what else <laughs> needs to be said. It's a, it's a, um, replacement with a similar diameter okay. color. What's Maybe. the length of that pipe, please, Mr. Herzog? I believe it's 18 feet. I, can't, I didn't bring the... 18 or 24? Oh. The length is 15, sorry. Length is 15 feet. Thank you. Dave, anything else? Okay. Becky? I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you, Becky. I forgot you. Thanks. No, <laughs> no I'm, I'm, I don't have any concerns with this one. I did have a chance to go through the plans. Um, it is an improvement over what's there now, so. That, I think. You have any? Nope, I'm good. Uh, my only question is, what's the Inver? I do not I'm, want to drain those wetlands. Well, I'm gonna zo I'll zoom in. Yeah, I'll leave <clears> it on there. It is. It should be on Couldn't there. Couldn't see it. I was looking for it. 574. 574? Yeah. Okay. Great. That's the only question I have on that. Uh. Now, where are you headed now? This is the culvert removal. So this is changed today from the plans that I sent you on Wednesday a little bit. In that there is more detail are we on provided. The third, are we on the third? Um, Correct. Yep. We're we're on on the, what they call the mosquito. The, the mass DOT ditch. They. The, they ditched yeah, that. the one that, the, the, you know. Yep. We haven't even determined whether that's an intermittent or a stream. Have we? We really don't know. Really don't know. Yeah. Yep. So we have to treat it as a stream. Okay. So what we've proposed is to open it up to basically remove the completely failed culvert that's being bypassed by that DOT yeah. ditch. Mm -hmm and allow natural flow. So there'll be no constraint uh, at all. And <clears throat> well, the pro this I have a problem with that if it drains the uh, right. drains and that was the wetland. That's a comment that Art Allen had as well. He said, you make sure we specified that the, the inlet is, or the, the point above the inlet that is at the downstream end of that ponded area yeah. is not changed by removal of this culvert. So that's what the note says. Uh, the contractor is to provide a phase construction plan 
um, but the ponded water on both sides of the, shall be maintained without draining into the removal area. Well, the, the ponded area on the um, up gradient side is much higher than the ponded area down below. So to have them both the same would be to drain the one above. Do, I believe it's meant to maintain where they are presently. So the, repla the removed culvert will be removed and replaced with basically an open ditch that is at an angle. Right. I don't have a problem with that. But I do, do not want the stream drain, so therefore um, you have to maintain the upper um, berm. Right. Correct. And that's what we propose to do. And so the ponded water um, shall not be allowed to drain into the removal area. So essentially what we're okay, saying... And what, what will the invert on that be? If you're going to... We did not have um, survey data on this culvert since this was not part of the original proposal. So it just came in today? came in on Tuesday. Tuesday? Mm hmm And, and it, they modified the plan to include this, but they changed the, um, the detail, too, a little bit because the well, original one... We talked one about it a, a little bit when we were on site. Yeah. That that, you know... So could be a solution because you didn't need access. Correct. Right. And so I'd also like to point out that we're, we're offering to do this as an improvement to the wetland system in the area. It's not necessary. BWC doesn't need access to this, to that part of the road. The road isn't even open. But when we walked across <coughs> there, we yeah. thought, you know, it's, it's kind of a mess with the DOT ditch. Since we'll have equipment out there we're replacing these other culverts, we could open this up as a restoration effort. One might say that it was part of the original plan. It would have been to replace that culvert, but not to open it up to restore it. Right. Yes. So this is, a, you know, if you want to do the original, replace the re original culvert, I'll be glad to have you do that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> With all due respect, why, why would you request that as opposed to opening it up to restore the I'm not, but flow? I just don't want you to tell me you're doing me a favor. <laughs> okay. okay. That was, going to, that was going to be a reach. <laughs> I just wanted to pull up the detail on the plan that you sent on Tuesday versus this one, because this sure. one shows it to be backfilled. Yeah. Like the whole area, the, the whole versus the other one had, um, the, and I don't know if that was a mistake on their behalf or not, but. Um, I think it is to in order to represent that there would not be an immediate drop out of that okay. ponded area, so that it would front. drain the ponded okay. area. Yeah, I just which wasn't is sure. Using only one cross section, it's maybe not as possible. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is maybe a little bit better for you to to look how at wide, here. How wide is that? This. The the yeah the the stream. I don't know. It's all crushed it's, and filled there. Yeah. <laughs> been like that for a long I don't know no no I mean how wide is the plan how wide are they gonna oh that drawing yeah. right there is shown as not to scale I think it will be up to the contract to determine in the in the field with how wide like the environment to monitor maybe so what are you showing us Becky well just to show the other one didn't show it that you know yeah. the, the riprap mm -hmm. slope on the side and that you know the material is this mm -hmm. material will be removed the other one kind of made it look like the whole thing would be backfilled almost. Like I think just yeah. a little bit clearer here. Yeah. So which one is accurate? <coughs> I think they're both meant to show the same thing. It just wasn't. If one's a revision of the other, one of them takes supersedence. Well, we could consider that the second one does because the second one is a representation of the removal of the culvert without cutting all the way down to the existing ponded area to drain that ponded area without having the sidewalls reinforced, such as they are in this diagram? They would be restored. So, yes. Mud? With, no, with, with uh, riprap. Uh, yeah, I think they're still proposing to do this. It just, I think we'd have to reference maybe both sheets or have another detail, just so it's clear, maybe. See, what I'm worried about is y'all leave, and a contractor takes over, and he takes the print that was approved, and it doesn't have that detail on it, and he says, way to go, bud. And he's off and running. So now somebody has to fire the bulldozer operator and say, well, we fixed the problem. That's not it. 
the print is what's going to be sacred when it's on that foreman's hands. And if it does not show riprap along the edges, you cannot suppose that there's going to be riprap put in out of the goodness of the heart of the operator of that equipment. You know better than that, I know better than that. So let's make sure that the print indicates what's going to be there. Dave, would you be okay with if they came up with a separate plan that they could work on for this with a little more detail that we could reference in our orders of conditions be far as a condition and maybe that would allow you to work on that plan um, just to well, clarify. Let's, well, let's get through where we are. Sorry, right sorry. right now, Dave is saying, I, Steve, what are you saying? I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need more detail on it to approve okay. that. Uh, to, to approve that. How wide, you know, um, was, you know, where, where is it? As far You've as got to remember, is Ed, it's it's an improvement, and so some of the detail may be lacking because they haven't really seen exactly what's there, or they haven't measured exactly what's there. They saw a problem, and they're going to fix the problem for us by taking out a pipe that no longer functions. Right. What we want to make sure is that. It, and what I'm sure that you want to make sure of also is that you don't want to exacerbate the situation. Right. And what I'm worried about is, with all good intentions on the part of yourselves and the board, it gets exacerbated by the operator who doesn't understand what the good intention was. <coughs> uh, Dave, I, I, I agree with you on this. Um, and to your point, Ed, what we would like to do is to put in the order of conditions that specifically both sides of that uh, new opening will be done in riprap. Um, we would like to make sure that, that the, the board is satisfied and that it is memorialized. So if we can put that in the order of conditions as, uh, 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 as a point of approval, then I, I, don't, I don't see an issue with us memorializing it in the order of conditions and then allowing us to give you a detail or if you want have art supervise w the work that we do so that he visually sees rip wrap being installed we're we're amenable to either way if you want it memorialized give us the opportunity to to put that detail but not as um, an order or a condition of approval to, to tonight but that we will give you that detail prior to any excavation and we'll have art review it as well I would like to see it memorialized just for the record so that when we're not around or when y'all are not around I, I I don't disagree with you we we will revise the plan um, so that it shows riprap on the <clears throat> set of plans that you received yesterday um, and we, we, we can also memorialize it in the order of conditions. It's just going to take, you know, it, the guy had the AutoCAD in front of him right now. He'd be able to change it. So we're just, if it's, if it's okay with you, that we, we put it as an order of conditions. I, I'd rather not get to the summary at this point. Let, let's let's <coughs> um, go through that. That's, um, so what we're really talking about is, is Basically putting that putting on together, it. I'd like to see an invert on it. I'd like to know how wide it's going to be. I'd like to see um, the riprap. Um, I don't know. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. So, so we've gone through the three. Um, with apologies to mosquitoes. Yeah. Call it. We call that mosquito river now. <laughs> Just so you know, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We call it uh, Brook Trout River, but we don't have any more of those around here. Um, Next up, landscape. Yep. Okay. Yep. Landscaping. Okay. Do you want to go to one array first, or does it matter to you? I, I definitely need to. I don't think it matters because both of them will be treated similarly. Okay. What we're proposing is uh, to cut the mature trees adjacent to each of those arrays and again I'll point out that Art Allen reviewed this and provided comments and his comments were directed towards ensuring that we foster wildlife habitat so we proposed uh, to, to top the trees uh, and girdle them 
so that we leave standing snags and to leave as much slash in place in piles to provide wildlife habitat as is possible in that area. So there, the lines shown on there are the wetland, the BVW boundary, and a 50-foot offset and a, the 100-foot buffer. So for this area, this is the southern array, 2B, approximately 35,000 square feet of uh, trees will be cut, which is almost all of that is within the wetland buffer zone. So we're proposing to replace those with shrub species and with an herbaceous and grass mix. Uh, and again, with the wildlife habitat um, promoted by piles of slash. And it's similar for the northern one, although in the northern one, the entire area would be in wetland buffer zone. Same thing, top the trees, girdle them, and replace with uh, shrub species, so shadbush and witch hazel, and an herbaceous and grass seed mix, uh, you know, a wildlife fostering mix. So it's the area 2A in the, the southwest of the array. And as you recall from the site visit, the area, that large, <coughs> excuse me, L-shaped area, one, has already been cut and uh, is proposed to be replanted according to this, the planting plan. You're talking about this right here. Yes, I'm yep. sorry. I forget I have the pointer, right? This has already been cut. This has not, which is what we're proposing now, to provide uh, sunlight for the the array since it's shaded at certain times of year. One comment for on 2B, and I, I didn't look it up and I kind of forgot about it, is that we noticed the, um, <coughs> either it was the osprey or the heron nest. Um, remember we saw that in the wetland? Mm, we osprey. just want to avoid the nesting period for them, um, for that disturbance for when the trees are being cleared. So I didn't look Which up. Which now, it's, right? It, yeah, I believe it's now. So, but that might be ending soon I'm not sure when they fledge or not so we can look that up but that would be one important thing that would um, okay. probably should be avoided was that nest in the area to be cut or in the wetland it was in, in the, the wetland Wetlands it was it was further south um, I don't sure I could just go back over Always here in the wetlands it's good protection for them yeah yeah it wasn't too close so maybe it wasn't it will that much of a concern it was like back over here yeah, yeah. okay it was enough <coughs> it was enough when we were walking to jump them did they? Yeah. 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 Um, and right, this one, I think the line goes right at the 25 foot yeah. buffer. I, I, I'm pretty sure I think that's what we. Oh, the, of the area that will be cut? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's about 25 feet off of the wetland, the wetland, the BBW boundary. Yeah. And I mean, I don't think the nesting period will affect too much, especially if, say, you were to start with your other one first or something. And then this one gets a lot closer to the wetland. Yeah, this was not previously proposed. Um, so we showed it within, you know, practically within uh, 10 feet or so of the wetland. This one you mean? Yes. Well, the cutting between the two wetlands on the other one was not previously proposed either. Previously proposed this time? I'm Or are you talking right. with the original plan? Um, the original. I, I thought from Art that it was, or the trees had been counted, or it had been discussed. It probably was not part of the order of conditions. So maybe I'm the, mistaken. The fencing as you ha have it was the limit of work, period. This is a new request. So both of these are new. Okay. David, you want to? Do you want to start with Becky? Becky, I thought Becky had been. Oh, well, I just noted that on this one that it yeah. was a lot closer to the edge of the wetland. I didn't know if yeah. the all of the trees to the edge of the wetland had to be cut or not, or if, or if the plan was to kind of cut those and leave those as standing dead, or if there was some that could stay, kind of if there was a, some thoughts about that because it is right on the border. Uh, if the commission has a preference, we could leave some of them. We could leave a border. Um, again, I've, we discussed this with Art, or I did, in the field, and uh, he looked at the plan and thought this was okay. Particularly if we're going to be topping and girdling rather than cutting, certainly would not be um, stumping or grading anything. Uh, but we certainly would be amenable to modifying this to match the other one if that's what the commission would pre prefer. So it wasn't planned on this one to leave, um, to cut the tops off and girdle Yes, them. it was. It's oh, the okay, same okay, thing, okay, right. Okay. It's just that for this, we propose cutting right to the wetland edge or within several feet as, yeah. as practical. 
Is, is that actually noted on the plan or is that just a reaction to Art's comments? It, it was changed and put on the plan. I did check it. Yeah. There is a plan? About the topping and girdling? Yeah, yeah yep, that's on it's, the plan. It's um, farther down. Right here. Clearing notes. And it does note on here too, I forget the exact language, that there will be an arborist who will um, work with our environments a monitor for this. So they wouldn't be, um, art would have to be there when they select and start doing some of the work. I don't know if it meant to have them there the whole time, but there was a note on there for that, just so you know. The only other comment is if you leave a roll of trees, it becomes vulnerable to high winds and it's gonna fall anyway. <coughs> Not do it in a controlled fashion. That would be more. Annoying. Gentlemen, ready for discussion? Well, uh, yeah. We, to, we haven't had a chance to talk about the landscape plan yet. Well, it's what we're doing right now, isn't it? Right now. Oh, I thought you were trying to move it on. No. Oh no. Um, Becky, can you go to the top left where that set of notes is, please? Yeah. I have exactly the same complaint because it's all part of the same plan in that you just take a look at that and think about trying to read that on your phone because that's the only way we had it we if we couldn't come into the office and read the plan itself so I have not had a chance to see the entire plan as it exists however I did pick up on note 7 so could you highlight note 7 please <laughs> Becky well so you no try to read as much as you can in the small amount of time that's available to you yeah. Note 7 scares me. So if you can make it bigger. Oh, just zoom in. Second line. <clears throat> Existing individual trees within the industrial zone setbacks of area 2 and 5 will be selectively removed based upon the location in context to the array, species, and existing height potential. And you say nothing about the existence of an arborist, a certified arborist. So I am left to believe, because I'm only reading this set of notes, which are all the landscape notes, that somebody with a chainsaw walks in and says, yep, I think that one should go, bang, it's down. And I'm sorry, that's not how it's going to go. We can't leave it up to the guy with the, with the chainsaw to arbitrarily cut these trees down. And you don't say anything in here, and so it was interesting that you started at the back notes while these are the front notes. So if you didn't have a chance to read all the front notes, you sure as heck didn't get to read all the back notes. That's why we like the plans early, so we can look at them, so we don't have stupid questions to ask where you say, oh, that's covered on page six, but you only got to page four. Well, number eight does have language. And, I mean, I don't know if it should have been part of number seven, but it does have language um, that registered landscape architect, blah, 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 will identify those trees, and then a member of yep. the Conservation Commission or the designee will walk the area um, to concur with the tree removal. I don't know if it should say prior to actual removal, but I think that's the intent. Anyway. That's my disturbance. Okay. We need to make sure that somebody is there who understands the culture of trees as opposed to <clears throat> the contractor, who might be the guy who's lopping the tops off of all the trees. The thing that's concerning, and I think the reason that you're before a conservation commission is because of the Wetland Protection Act and there are wetlands all over this, you're indicating that you're within the buffer zones. So when you take down the trees, what happens to the water? It heats up. And if it heats up, might it not also disappear? And part of the function of the trees is to shade. So yes, it shades the solar panels, but yes, it shades the water. So there has to be a trade-off made. And part of the trade-off can be made by an arborist as well as our environmental monitor, but he is only a monitor. He's only there to nod his head or to and shake his head. And so an arborist is 
answering the whole question. Well, that's why we're supposed to back it up afterwards. <laughs> Holy smokes. Anyway, that's, that's my last rant. Yeah, I have some pretty strong opinions about the tree clearing. Um, just, there were, okay, so there were three things we asked for. We wanted to see what was approved originally, what was actually done, yeah. and the additional tree clearing that you're requesting. So looking at this diagram, um, can you tell me what was originally approved? Was that the, the limited clearing where the fence is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and this honeycombed area on this side, which is away from the wetland. Right, yeah. And, uh, okay, so so the this line was what was approved. What was actually done then? Is same, that up to that line. The same up to that because line. The, right. Okay. The, the and so this is all this is the additional that you're asking for. Correct. So so this is um, in my opinion, this is a fundamental engineering, you know, design issue. Um, Becky, do you have those pictures, the satellite images yep. that I if you could just show those real quick. All right. So this is a view from uh, 2016 of where that array is. So this was extensively treed in here. Uh, there wasn't there, you know, some opening up at the top, but this is all, you know, a buffer between that extensive wetland and this big commercial development. So show the next one. And that's what has been put in uh, as of 9-12-17. So in my opinion, what was approved, they should have put in a solar array that was sized appropriately to fit this space and to not be impacted by the shading that's there. I mean, it's they know what the shading is going to be based on what was requested originally. It's not a surprise. The trees didn't suddenly sprout up and, you know. So, um, so this array was put in and it, it should have been no surprise as to exactly how much um, you know shading was happening. So now you're coming in and you're saying, well, uh, this array, you know, is being shaded. It's it's, you know, the, these trees are too close. Now we want to cut down all of these trees that are along this wetland. My problem with this is that all of these trees are gone now, and we have very little buffer between this enormous wetland in here and this big commercial development. So I really, I, I have a problem with this because it, it seems like it's a, you know, a self-imposed uh, problem that you, that this array was put in, you know, and wasn't designed correctly, it wasn't sized correctly for the space that was approved. Now, um, I was basically of the opinion that I, I wasn't going to approve any of, I, you know, I wasn't going to agree with, with any of this tree cladding. Then I saw Art Allen's comments about, you know, topping and girdling the trees and taking the slash and creating habitat. And, um, you know, based on those comments, I'm more willing to compromise and allow some cutting. But I'm, I, you know, I, d I don't like the fact that you're going almost, almost right up to the edge of that wetland on this side. Um, I'm more amenable to the clearing on the, the back array because there isn't, other than the, the turnpike, there isn't, you know, something there that is going to be a huge disturbance to the wildlife. You know, you don't have this big commercial complex. So um, I don't know where that leaves us, but I, I'm I'm very uncomfortable with how close this the cutting is now going to be to that wetland. I, I understand your concern, and I really want to point out that we are proposing to replant the area, but with tree with shrubs as opposed to trees that would. Right, and those, right. those shrubs are going to provide, as Dave said, you know, we won't get the same shading, we're not going to get the same buffer to the, you know, commercial activities, and um, so that 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 wetland is much more likely to be disturbed by everything that's happening um, over here. So we've proposed uh, to top <coughs> and girdle these trees and replace them with uh, shrubs that were facultative wetland plants. Mm -hmm. And this side has already has a, a planting plan that um, includes many more species, including taller species. That the taller ones will be planted on, towards the outside farther away from the array. So this will be a, a more uh, thorough right. restoration on that side. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, my, my comments go along the same line. Um, first of all, I, I have not had an adequate chance to, um, to look at the plans since I didn't have them over the weekend, which is when I would have had been able to not be working my job. Right. Um, so, I'm, so I'm not comfortable with it, but I'm also not comfortable with, um, I feel like we had a contract. We agreed to what we were going to do. And um, now you're coming back and saying, that's not good enough. You know, we don't agree uh, with what we brought you. We were, you know, it, the fire the bulldozer operator routine. We, we get it all the time, or we used to. We don't get it as much now. But um, so I have a problem with that. Um, I'd like to be able to work with you, but I don't. Um, but but I'm, as I say, I, I haven't gone through this as carefully as I'd like to. I do not, I, you know, Becky's willing to trust you and go with the, the, look, the look at what you're girdling, what you're doing, what your plan is, and, and um, I'm older and more cynical. So uh, it's, if, if it's not going to be something that, that we can do well and not, and not heat up the wetland, and I'm not going to be interested in doing it. I'd look at directions. I, I haven't got it all in my mind um, as to what what way the sun's coming on each of these. I mean, it's not hard to do, but I haven't done it. So I don't know. That's where I'm at. I don't. I don't think I could vote for this plan tonight. Yeah, I think we need more time. I, I agree with that. I didn't mention the the yeah. time factor, but yeah. yeah. So now. On 2B, you guys were able to leave like a 25-foot buffer versus this one is proposed all the way to the edge of the wetlands. Is there a reason for that this one can't at least get a 25-foot buffer versus going all the way to the edge? Is that so? Look, I, the the shading issue aside, anytime you do, and and I'm sure you guys are aware, anytime you do cutting along the edges. The, the new the new border then becomes susceptible so the the thought process is why let it come down uncontrolled when you can bring it you know if you're only going to leave a ribbon along that's going to be susceptible from both for, you know as as a new to win from from the edge then why not bring it down in a controlled manner put it in a situation um, that is recommended um, that was recommended by art and that way there's there's A bigger possibility, a better possibility, of maintaining or or improving the area, rather than having that sus susceptibility get hit and willy nilly, you know, fall as it as 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 a new target. So that was the the reasoning was that the the area that we were looking for um, would would be more beneficial. If it was a controlled cut rather than letting letting something else happen that may not assist or help, so. And again, that's why we proposed to replant the areas. We do. We're not proposing to cut all yeah. the trees <clears throat> and to stump and and grub, but just to to restore, but with with slow, with shorter species. Well, you know what we could do, <clears throat> because you are doing this over here. We could give it a couple of years and see how well you do that. I'll grow that up, and if you do a good job of that, then we can let you do the. Um, we can we can let you do the, the other portions. Right now, it looks pretty barren over there. I mean, as a we yeah. One of the things is we were hoping to get. As much of this growing season as possible, with the approval and yeah, we, we know. an economy, of, well, an, an economy of scale in terms yeah. of being able to mobilize. Right, we understand. Versus not. Right. Or or multiple. Yeah, don't. I don't disagree. If I were in your position, I would be too. But I would have asked for the cutting when I originally built the project. Yeah. Different management, different plans. Yeah. Um. Well, I get, I'd like to see a continuation on this to take a look, at, take a hard look at it. I'm not ready to vote for it myself personally tonight, and I'm not saying that I am going to be willing to vote for it. I'm just saying that I'm not. I want to take a look at 
the direction of the sun and, and take a look at the different configurations. I didn't get a chance to do it. I don't know how anybody else feels about that. I, I don't think it's right that we're supposed to vote on something on Thursday for when we get plans on a Wednesday. I mean, that doesn't make sense to begin with. That for that reason only uh, alone, they, we need, they need to continue. Yeah. Particularly where we told you we needed them on the previous Friday, <coughs> we didn't do anything with it. I mean, not that that matters, but you know, I'm just saying that. Well, no, we did. We did ask them if it was just enough time for them to get the plans together yeah. and for us to have them by the weekend. Yeah. And in fact, we were told, yes, not a problem. And when I asked about the plans on Monday, which might even have been more acceptable because it would have been another day that we could have looked at them, they still weren't available and modifications were being made on Wednesday. We went, we went on a site visit on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. If we had those plans, we could have you know, possibly gone over and taken a look at some of the changes. but. <coughs> so that's where we're at. I'd like to ask you to ask us for a continuation or we can vote on it. Amoresco wants us to vote on it. <laughs> well, we don't want a vote that's going to be negative. We want to make sure that we, one, that you guys are comfortable with, with everything that we propose. Yeah. <coughs> we want to make sure that we just we're able to turn it around in a sufficient manner so that we can start that vegetative planting process so I mean we can ask for the continuance is it based on do we have to wait for another formal hearing can yes. you review the drawings and a no mm -hmm. can I make one more comment sure um, I I am going to be I, I understand I, no, it's okay. I understand the argument you made about you know clearing everything, get, having a fresh start, and being able to you know control your boundaries. But I would be a lot more comfortable if we kept that 25 foot buffer intact. No, do do not touch that 25 foot buffer, um, and you can you know do as are suggested uh, for the rest of that. But that that's what I would uh, be comfortable with that I just want to let you know that if that's where I'm going plan. right yeah. if you're gonna come back with a plan that's what I would be comfortable with and I'm, I'm not comfortable with this where you're going in right to the edge of the, the wetland okay. can I ask would you consider allowing us to cut to the edge of the wetland and replant closest to the wetland with tree species the reason I ask is, as Ray mentioned, what's there right now are very tall uh, white pines. And if we cut on either side of them and leave a little ribbon, they're going to blow down on the wind in a matter of a couple of years. Um, so that's why on the other side, on, on uh, area one, we proposed a gradation from shrubs to trees getting farther from the array. Um, I understand your concern with wanting to protect the buffer zone. That's why it's called a buffer right. to the wetland. Um, but would you consider? allowing us to cut the tallest trees and replace them with shrubs grading to <coughs> low trees away from the, the array, closer to the wetland. Just a, something to consider. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I can't answer that right now, but I'm, I, One of the things we might consider, since a lot of the trees in that area are old white pine, is anything above 20 feet, for example, or anything above some number which in fact would probably only take the foliaged part of the white pine down because the rest of it is purely stock. All the rest of the branches have blown off because as you know, white pine grows that way. Um, and then that would leave all of the other trees. For example, there's not much oak in there, but there is some. Um, that, that would leave those to be hesitant. They'd be topped. I don't know. I, it's disappointing because we have a 25-foot buffer. We also have a 50-foot buffer. And <clears throat> you're violating all of them for the sake of a solar array that was approved three years ago because somebody screwed up three years ago. So the second question was, could we at least get a partial approval to start the work on the culverts? No. 
How about, how about looking at part of the landscape plan so that some of the, they have a valid argument in that they want a, a growing season. Right. And we want a growing season too. Right. But does it serve you any good to be able to go into the now flattened area, for example, on the right-hand side of the L-shaped area and plant the shrubs? Does that help at all? No. Really, the, the idea was to mobilize once. That, that, right. That, no, it, that window is diminishing. Um, you know, so if, if 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 the planting of that, and I guess this is the give and take, if the planting of that L-shaped region um, would would help to give you a better understanding of, of, of what we're looking to do and how we want to. While we're while we are cutting back, we, we do want to maintain and improve the the, the, the surrounding areas. Um, I mean, I, I I think that's that's something that's, that we can definitely um, we can definitely um, do in terms of at least getting the the planting in that in that region that's a buffer between um, the array and the wetlands um, that you know. That's a buffer between the, uh, the commercial. Good. Well, I mean, I don't think that that we're. I think we can. You can come back with a plan that we can accept, but you're going to have to look at the what you have to listen to what we've been telling you, um, and bring it back. I'm not. I'm not going to allow you to say, well, let us, let us just have one bulldozer in there right now, and and it'll be fine. Um, you know, I think they've mentioned that. You know, if if the pines are way over the top of, of the solar fields and, and then we can go in and do a, a mark and prune. That that's not out of the you know even if we just if you just dropped them in that section. That would but but that would have to be something that was a part of a plan that we agreed to and that we right. that we went step by step with. The other reasoning and I know you've said no, but I'd maybe just request just one yeah. more reconsideration. I mean, obviously the culverts are going to be in a in the dry season, and it'll be much much better for for the wetlands as well as for the repair work and the replacement work if we were able to do it during this dry season of June, July, and August. And I think the yeah. further we get away from that, it, it can you maybe take that under advisement and let us do the culvert work for 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 the sake of the wetlands well one option i guess i i could see is taking the landscape plan out of this notice of intent if that was an option that everybody thought was good approving the culvert as maybe a separate this notice of intent and issuing orders and maybe doing the landscaping separate you'd have to file a separate filing for that but that might be one way to at least get the culvert portion done because that was kind of originally what the plan was filed for was just to do the culvert so i guess that could potentially be an option i would be amenable to that I would be amenable to that absolutely yeah yeah would is that something you'd consider but that would be there would be no landscaping there would be no cutting it would be the, it would be the culverts and that's it or I guess if you felt okay with not this section but the other one, I'm just throwing that out there. No, no, I, I want to keep it separate. Yeah. I think that makes sense too. But nope. The L, I think that that can be planted at any time. I know you'd rather do everything at once. It sounds like, but I think that that is outside of our our buffer zone so we wouldn't need to pre-approve that landscaping that was shown on the original plan and I think that can be planted is my understanding that's for the planning board isn't it I think it's been approved by them yeah. the original plan and, so. and as you said I'd feel better seeing you know the work done in that section before you know really looking at what we're doing okay. so it's, do you want us to approve just the work for the culverts? Yes, please. Well, they haven't answered the question relative to the concrete culvert and the 100 year storm question that I asked. Right.
Are you comfortable it, with that? It does meet the 100 year it does. standard. It, I understand that it doesn't, but they're not really required to. to yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. I agree. But, you know. Even I wasn't able to pick up the date of the revision that was used, but is it the 2014 revision or is it the 2017 revision? I couldn't see that because it was too small. I believe it was 2017. Yeah. That makes it a little bit better. But no, I'm worried because the 2014 was revised remarkably. The 100 year standards were moved up by 15%, 12 to 15%, which was startling to me. All right, well, the question is how do we handle this? Because of right now it's one NOI. How, what, what's well, the process? Well, technically, the first plans came in. There was no um, additional tree clearing, so I, I think we just approve the, the plan for the landscaping is separate than the plans for the culverts, anyways. So we just approve the culvert plans with the conditions that we talked about for the stream restoration. Um, getting another detail on that and the landscaping. And not plan. approve the, not approve the. Uh, right. I mean, it came in after the fact with the the filing so I think we just need to just we wouldn't cite that plan Wait, but right plan. now it's one plan right nope it's two separate plans two separate plans, two separate okay. plans. Oh, okay yeah so that should make it easy so I make a motion well we got to close the public hearing oh, okay you're, are you amenable to what we what we've discussed there on that part okay all right so I'd like a motion to close the public hearing. wait before but, I do that audience anybody in the audience like yeah, to speak another question for you, John Ratter. We're going to talk would, in the microphone, John, please. What would be the efficiency increase that you propose for the company to harvest that money or uh, come around the number of uh, hours by doing this versus leaving it reduced? And again, based upon specials, you have trees, loose of leaves, and the fall, and the rest of the most of the season, all leaves. What do you expect the efficiency to Going to turn it on? That, that mic's not turning on. Oh, okay. Can you give yeah. Turn it on. Mr. Radner, could you start again, please? Yes, this is John Radner. I'm not in a butter, just for curiosity. Engineer for, by trade. Uh, what do you expect the efficiency to increase to, for you guys to have for a uh, kilowatt hour increase by that amount of cutting versus so what do you got now? This is a community solar um, project, and there are um, customers that are anticipating a certain amount of renewable energy as part of their portfolio and part of their okay. um, part of their uh, way of being more green and, and being more in tune with, with what, what is happening in, in, in their community. That being said, the efficiencies are in the order of magnitude of around 13 to 15 percent. So right it's now it's un yeah. right now it's underperforming considerably. Um, typically you're, you're looking for plus plus or minus two percent on good years versus bad years, okay. and this is well below that, and it's in the 13 to 15 percent. Okay. John, I'm going to cut this down because we're, this is the Conservation Commission, you know, I, and I appreciate it as we all do, but uh, um, we got got to get moving here somewhere. Um, anybody else have anything to do with the wetland? Um, all right. If we close the public hearing, though, c uh, can we talk? We, close we won't be able to talk about the new if they bring back a different plan or whatever, right? Right. So we can't divide it up. You're talking about can't divide the landscape. Well, it goes plan back. Up? Yeah. Yeah. They'd have to file a new notice of intent yeah. for it. And you're okay with that for the landscape plan? That's our option. Could ask to amend. The existing orders, if you felt you, that was appropriate, but it would be. All right. Do you understand what we're saying? 
Yes, yeah. And the, the difference would be filing a new notice of intent would require a butter notification, fee, newspaper notice, right. time. Yeah. So an amendment Unless we would can, be preferable. Is there any way we, we can um, yes. just make it an, an, ad, uh, an adjustment to the order of conditions? We, we can. We can amend it. Just and amend it. We still have to do like a butter notification and just legal ad. And I think because we are talking about it now, um, I think that it would be acceptable to do it that way in some situations okay. um, you wouldn't be able to add new work on but since it's part of the project that maybe that'll be our that'll be our intent anyway and hopefully we can do that so thank you yeah all right so um, close okay. public yeah I make a motion to close public hearing I have a second second the discussion you make a comment with your motion about amendment Somewhere the amendment has to be in there. Otherwise, people would think we close the public hearing, period. Um, okay. I make a motion to uh, close the public hearing it, with the understanding that we plan to amend the order of conditions, the existing order of conditions, to include um, the landscaping plan. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay. All in favor? All right, now. Um, Sorry, I just want to add, we will be opening a new public hearing when they have to amend it. Like, okay. So, you know, so now within the order of conditions on the um, call. The second, the closing of the public hearing. Yes. When they come back with their landscape plan, when they ask to amend it, we'll open a new public hearing right. for that. Okay. So I think we could close this. Yes. Yeah. Because right. it'll be a new one. So it's closed. It's closed. So now. Um, a motion so to approve I, the yeah I make a motion policy. that we approve the um, culvert work as discussed and as um, outlined in the plans with a change to the detail on the restoration right yeah. with a change yeah. to the detail on to the restoration for the um, to include a riprap plan an invert on where it starts at and how wide and how wide it is yep. Anything else? I don't think so. Are we going to mention the L? Because that's not that's not part of our purview. The L itself is is um, planning board. No, we're not mentioning. We're not going to okay. mention. It. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing else that I can think of. Yeah. All in favor? No, we need a second first. Second. Okay. You got, oh, I didn't have a second. Yeah. No. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were in discussion phase. Discussion <laughs> yeah. now? Well, we were, but <laughs> we weren't supposed to be. All right. All right, all in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. Okay. All right, we are now at 6.30. Take care. Notice of intent, D. File number 300 1016, uh, 39, 139, 140 Lake Road. Radner represented by Jalbert Engineering, construction of a uh, single family home within <coughs> the buffer zone. See what happens when they're clumsy? I bumped into the car with these in my pocket. That's what happens, I guess. You got another pen? Not with me. Good evening, Leonard Jalbert from Jalbert Engineering, uh, representing the uh, project at 139 140 Lake Road that is uh, uh, was presented previously and continued to uh, tonight, basically with uh, a few alterations. Uh, one was uh, the uh, had to be new trees that were planted in the back. Uh, landscaping was going to be addressed in, in the uh, front of the property, and the uh, drainage on the uh, building itself from the drip edge was going into a uh, containment area instead of the uh, street drop area on the uh, building. Uh, the plans were submitted reflecting the uh, proposed changes. Uh, what we plan to do is we're putting in three new 
uh, trees out in the back here, uh, which is the uh, a red maple, a white pine, and another red maple on this side. And then on this part in the front of the building, we're also putting a uh, red maple uh, in the front of the building adjacent to the uh, driveway itself. The uh, drip edge on the sides of the building, which are on the north and south sides, have been removed. And we're putting in a Caltech chamber uh, system in the back, uh, which is detailed on the sheet. And the drainage for the gutters will be going into that Caltech uh, chamber, which will be a closed system. Uh, it will not uh, discharge within the roadway itself. So that's basically uh, what we've uh, had to address, and that's what we addressed to come before you tonight uh, with, with those changes. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. All right, so um, we we'll have a couple comments. So they added four trees for the three trees removed. Um, it does state that they would loam and seed, but it's not doesn't specify like a seed mix, so something suitable. Um, I looked up a couple options, maybe like um, just kind of a shaded area, so New England semi-shade grass and Forbes mix from New England wetland plants might be good there. So I mean, the intent wouldn't be that it's maintained as a lawn. Um, so I might ask, you know, especially at the back area, to let that go and kind of revert back. I know you mentioned putting a couple of trees there, but um, with that kind of re revert back. Um, a plan for um, closing the erosion controls at night because the erosion controls would be right at the access point here off of Lake Road. Mm -hmm. So just having something clear and whoever the contractor is knows exactly what needs to be done because we do know there's good potential for erosion here with the steepness in the road. Um, a condition which was talked about last time too um, about matching the grading with 138 Lake Road when they do their project um, in between we did talk about that so I'd, I'd add that in there um, yeah, right he added the Cultec as we asked um, we asked that it included like a closed gutter system um, that was it those those were the two things the, the Cultec yeah. and then the um, the planting so as long as that back portion kind of reverted back and wasn't lawn, I think. Okay. Also, which which does not go with this, one of the other things, what there was an area of concern about the blending of the uh, Radna property with the abutter. Uh, the abutter has uh, retained us to s survey <coughs> his property and to flag his property line, which is one of the provisions in the order of conditions to the one next door, and that the contours will we are assured that they're going to match mm -hmm. these here with his, and we're going to go out and surveying it presently. Okay. So, what are you saying, Lenny? We're really good for your business? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll give you a bonus. <laughs> 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 I, I appreciate you updating the plans to address our concerns. Sorry to say that. Um, I'm still, you know, I still want to, for the record, comment that I'm uh, concerned about the amount of trees <coughs> that, you know, we're doing a, we're taking down a lot of trees and we're replacing them with four, but um, I understand we're highly constrained in the amount of room you have here. So um, I'm, I'm okay with the, with the revisions. David? No comment. No comment. Paul? None. I think they, yeah. they did what we asked, really. Yeah. I agree. Do I have uh, anybody in the audience who would like to speak? I'd like to make close. a motion to close the vote. Well, yeah. Public hearing. Second. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. All right. Do I have a motion? David, you know, I see you. Yep. Um, this is an NOI. Yep. Um, make a motion to issue an order of conditions under the Mass Wetland Protection Act. And the town of Sturbridge bylaw, and the conditions are the ones that Becky has referred to earlier already. Okay. As well as our standard as, yeah. conditions. Right. Do you have a second, Paul? Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Any opposed? 
Oh, 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 your counting skills are going to hell. I miss you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm blocking his Get view. the hand up, will you, for Christ's sake? No, you didn't ask if there was any negatives. Yeah, you're, you're opposed? Okay. Well, yeah, because there were only three hands up, Ed. Yeah, but well, the thing is, if the, this, the big guy was in the way, I, I just assumed. <laughs> usually when you're going to vote no, you've been, been beating on the applicant for about a half an hour. That's because I, I used to sit next to you. <laughs> okay. You Thank you very much. Yeah, America's Got Talent next. Like, yeah. Thank you for your time. Not even a chance. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, we have an abbreviated notice of a, uh, a resource area delineation. DEP file number to, uh, 1017, uh, 14, and 15. Bye, guys. Is that correct? 14 and 50? No, or is it 14? <laughs> Am I? Dowdy wrote. That project can't work. 14, 14 and 50. Yeah, yeah okay. Northeast yeah. south side of the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, they, they got to live with it. Theo Connell. Uh, represented by Burton that's Engineering, uh, uh, confirming the extent of the wetland resource areas continued from uh, 317. I, and I just want to add that Burton Engineering has previously provided me with the legal ad and the abutter notification, so we do have those. So we can open the public hearing. Okay. Okay. It's a tiny house. No one's going to want it because it's so small. Alrighty. Uh, Frank McCary with Burton Engineering, uh, along with uh, Andy Cormier from Escape Estates, representing Peter O'Connell on the project. So, um, yeah, so we're here just to lock in uh, the wetlands. Um, uh, we proposing a sub. We will be proposing a subdivision uh, for the property, and we want to lock in the wetlands so that way, when we we had done conceptual subdivision plans on GIS information, we now have everything surveyed. So we have field survey information, and uh, really, the con we want to lock in the wetlands because obviously. You know, there's a pocket right here, Ashley. and so we'd be looking to change our roadway alignment to adjust for the wetlands on site, um, you know, to respect the buffer zones and the no disturbs and such. Yeah, wait till she comes back. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Give her a minute. I'm just told they can go in the room and close the doors. Yeah. I wish the microphone worked in this room. Microphone, <laughs> 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 microphone. <laughs> wow. Ask my kids, I can get loud. <laughs> right. <laughs> maybe, maybe you need to crank it up a little bit. Come on. Uh, so yeah, so we're trying to lock, walk in the, lock in the wetlands, <laughs> so that way when we, you know, do our roadway design and basically design all our lots, you know, the idea would be to put a lot line, or, you know, kind of split the wetlands, and so that way the buffer zones, you know, we could potentially, you know, have houses outside the buffer zone. So we want to work around the wetlands, and so that's why we want to walk in, lock in the wetland line. Um, I believe the commission had requested a peer review and that we submit names uh, for a peer review. We've submitted that. Uh, we submitted three different. Well, well we oh. only had an informal conversation oh, last time, so they didn't okay. formally vote on anything right. since because we couldn't we open couldn't the public hearing. So, they, yeah, we did have that the informal conversations that we would want that. And so we it's could, our understanding yeah. that yep. the commission would like to have it peer reviewed. And so um, we had provided Becky with three different um, wetland, we felt qualified wetland scientists and we would defer to the board to give us some direction on who they'd like to use for a third party reviewer uh, to confirm the wetlands. I know there's concerns with a, um, a low area down here, um, uh, the site's all field, but there is a low area in culvert here that uh, leads to these wetlands and there's some question of this area. So I know, um, you know, it was fl flagged by Art Allen of Ecotech and then Escape Estates also had uh, Matt, uh, Matt Morrow. Matt Morrow flag it as well. Um, so what is shown on all the plans is all the flagging that was our surveyors picked up. And so, um, you know, we defer to the third party review and we're just looking for confirmation of the lines. So, so you've given Becky three? Yes. Okay. Yep. Margaret Washburn, uh, Glenn Kravosky, and Chris Lucas. Okay. Lucas environmental. Or Chuck Karen. There was a fourth. Karen yeah. oh, there was environmental. A fourth. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, we'd just be looking for some direction from the commission on um, on that peer review, and obviously any questions. You have anybody at this point? So you're going to interview them, or how are you going to do it? Yeah, that would be the next step in the process. Okay, so, so I started to kind of look into their information a little bit, but I wanted to wait till we had our public hearing yep. and have it formally, formally asked yeah. for yeah. Yes. to start that process. So that that would be the next step if if they you know voted to do the third party exercise their right yep. um now that we have those names we could contact them um 
it would go directly through us and not through the project proponent or their project team. So yeah. we would start that process and um, get quotes and then work with you to set up the funds here and stuff like that. So great. Um, is that what we've discussed? Is that what you're interested in doing? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. need to get the David Watlin review. Yeah. Paul. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And if I yeah, you were right. In, <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, and if I and if I may, I, I know it was flagged a while ago, and so we do have to rehang flags. So um, we're happy to do that at any point in time. We don't want to do it prematurely and have them fall off. So you know, obviously, we would coordinate that with the third party once they have someone on board, and once they, you know, anytime the commission wants to lock it, <coughs> okay. know, let us know, and we'll, we'll make sure everything is. is what do you want to set a date for having that done? Um, we should get that started as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah we definitely. Yeah, I yep. we yep. want to move yep. as quickly as possible. And um, one thing that we had mentioned last time, well, we did mention that we didn't observe, we didn't walk the whole site, but we didn't right. observe the, the flags in the field here. Yep. Um, but right, we would need those flags back up. And it's so, mostly grasses and price edges there, so maybe some right. type of staking with flagging might be appropriate, yeah, and, and then nothing gets easy, lost. Easy to see, yep. Um, and then also <laughs> requested that, um, that areas near or immediately adjacent to our resource areas by the field yeah. aren't mowed so that way um, someone can accurately yeah. go in and, and document the what vegetation. vegetation's there etc because they're especially here and I mean I know it was mowed for hay last year so whenever the delineation was done I think it could have been easily maybe missed okay. that there is a change of vegetation there so we just want to make sure that someone can accurately look at it and get the right results um, and you know if it gets cut that could delay the results and the ability to to confirm the wetland delineation so okay. this one to point out to the com again? commission too that how many how many what how many lots oh i think we have 45 total 45 yeah so the lot numbers thank you stay the, same. Not, the numbering change be because in like process wise we're filing an a and r for the frontage mm -hmm. lots on dowdy so that way we can start uh, potentially huge. building spec houses on wells and septics pending the sewer and water extensions and um, so the numbering change because the ANR didn't make sense to submit lots 45, 44, you know, as kind of standalone. Yeah. So we renumbered for the ANR and we provided an updated plan. So as we're discussing lots and potentially developing lots, um, that way we were all on the same page with what lot number represents what physical lot. Um, so that we were giving you this plan just because um, there was a change from uh, previous plans that were submitted to the town for the um, to the selectmen for the. The sewer extension and such so I um, just wanted to get you updated as as things progressed so um, the, the southern part was actually flagged two years ago I believe now 16 I don't remember maybe longer than that yeah, well, it would have been 60 it would have been longer than two years ago because um, that's when we started on the project and um, everything else was flagged more recently um, right some as soon as April this year yeah pretty, it's pretty mm -hmm. fresh flagging so the, all the northern stuff is pretty fresh the southern is a bit older all right, so we've got the names. Yes. Becky will interview them and um, make a recommendation to the to the board. Okay. As to uh, who you want to go with. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank we'll you. We'll go from there. All right. Do we Thank need you. to have them ask yes. for a continuation? Um, yeah. Well, I think you oh. need to vote to decide that you're going to um, yeah. ask yeah. for a third party re review. In favor of <coughs> the peer review. And we'll, we'd ask you for a continuation. Yes, yeah, so we respectfully request we continue so we can get the third party review. Okay. Thank you very much. Can we approve the All in favor of the continuation? Yep. Yeah. So we're, that's it. You're done. No. Thanks, well, They're not done. No. The <laughs> <one>. well, <laughs> they're they're well, they're done with this. <laughs> this one's done. That's phase one. <laughs> we'll do that as yep, exactly. Okay. This is a uh, tip of the iceberg here. You guys get up and walk around the, and sit back down. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Reintroduce myself. Yeah. Uh, notice of intent, DEP number. Uh, no. Oh, no, correction. Yeah, I wrote it on yours after we um, yep. posted our agenda, the DP file number came out. I All think right, the so same day. it's 300 dash, uh, 1018, 18, 14, and 50, Dowdy Road, represented by Burton Engineering, construction of a sewer line application project. All right. Thank you. Now we're just opening this, I understand, because... Yes. Yep. Um, we anticipate uh, continuing because we haven't gotten comments back from the DPW is obviously a major um, major input as far as the overall sewer design. So we don't, uh, we're not expecting to close this evening. Um, we just, 
you know, basically want to present the project, get feedback from the commission, and then we'll be requesting the continuation um, pending departmental reviews to make sure that they're right. And okay I, yeah, and I did talk to, to okay. Frank, so we can't we can't officially vote and issue a permit because the property owner is the town, right. which is not the applicant in this situation. Yes. So we have to wait till the town approves it um, and signs off on them filing for work on their property. So. Right. Do we want to do this now or do we want to wait until we've got the input from the town? I mean, I, I would like to get some input from you guys back if we could now. Yeah, okay. Just, yeah. just so yeah, that way when we get Greg's Fine. comments and everything, we can kind of do it all in one shebang and we're not kind of piecemealing addressing comments and that way <coughs> we know kind of the direction to go in um, moving forward, especially responding to Greg's stuff as well. Okay, we'll tell you right now, we disagree. <laughs> <laughs> we disagree. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> That's it. Go ahead, though. I would want to keep this moving we're well behind our uh sure um, presentation will be quick so um so what we're proposing um is a sewer extension basically sorry do you want me just to start with the oh if you go back i'll just kind of okay. give a quick overview so at some point um peter o'connell owns uh, the property here at 50 and 14 dowdy road and we'd like to subdivide the property as has been uh, brought in front of the selectmen it's been in front of the town before um, 45 lots um, in some private open space, public open space. Um, we're submitted, we have submitted an A&R to create frontage lots <coughs> off, of, off of Dowdy Road. Um, and then there'll be, the subdivision will come through and there'll be kind of a flag shape uh, roadway with lots off of that that was shown on um, the previous application uh, for the ANRAD. And uh, to support that project, we're proposing a, a sewer extension. So the, there'd be a, a gravity line from the top of Stallion Hill all the way down to in front of Old Sturbridge Village at the connection point, and then it would continue down to the pump station to the treatment plant. Uh, to get it to the top of Stallion Hill, we're proposing a gravity line down Dowdy Road and then a pump station at the bottom of Dowdy Road that would pump it back up to um, the gravity line down the road. Uh, we're also proposing a, a water booster station uh, in front of Starbridge Village that would have a water, propose a water line all the way up Dowdy Road, Stallion Road, Dowdy Hill, uh, Stallion Hill Road, Dowdy Road, and then up into the subdivision. Um, the subdivision will have a separate pump station, but it's not part of this sewer extension. And uh, there are wetlands located throughout. Um, obviously, you have Quinnebog down down by where we're connecting, and then there's wet, extensive wetland systems out in front of Starbridge Village, and uh, occasional wetland systems and um, intermittent streams along Stallion Hill Road, uh, culvert crossings along the way. Um, we've accounted for all that. So and we're providing stubs um, for uh, the abutting properties for water and sewer. And so I guess um, any concerns you might have, we can get into the plans and start looking closer, but it doesn't sound like you really want to do that tonight in the interest of time. But I guess, um, broader big picture concerns I guess that you might have um, without getting into detail because well, it seems like that's where we want to go this tonight. Ledgefield Road as you know right and the, the water comes down there and we've had I'm sure you've heard we've had major problems yep. with with water blowing out yep. you know through people's backyards and um, right. I would call it an intermittent stream um, down the hill you know right and there is, you know, it is basically ditch dr country drainage where it's ditches on either side of the road with right. culverts out the yeah. driveways. Um, yeah. So we are aware of that. that so there's a lot of engineering that's probably going to have to go into the... Yeah, and so we are, we're road. proposing the line, if you want to flip to any of the plans really, it's, um, we're proposing the line in the right of way, uh, basically in the pavement. So we'd be saw cutting pavement, trenching, because we want to keep it as far away from those drainage ditches as possible. And basically, we'd be starting at the bottom of the hill, working our way up. After each day, we'd be basically backfilling the trenches um, and then recycled asphalt pavement to compact it. So that way, if there is heavy rains, it's not just washing out. There is some sort of <coughs> you know, stabilization that's happening at the end of each day. So that would be the, the intent would be to work our way up yeah. one side of the road, work our way up the other side of the road, you know, not yeah. to open the whole roadway at once. What's the time and when do you? Expect to start as soon as we get approvals. Um, so hopefully in the next within the next month and a half. Is approval months. financing or is approval approval from the town? For town approvals, town financing approval. is already in place, so the financing is not an issue. Um, so that's that's been lined up. Um, so it's really we want to start as soon as we can, um, and we want to do it in the dry season. You know, get as much done in the dry season as possible, which you know we're coming up on in the next month or so. So it should work out pretty well if, you know, the next <coughs> month and a half we get our approvals in place, then things will start to dry out and that would be a better time to install everything. So, 
We're looking at about a, f a four month. We're thinking about a four, four month project that to complete it. Uh, July starting in by the end of July would be. Be laying Fantastic. both the sewer and water pipe simultaneously. Uh, the water would f be following behind a little bit, so it's at the same but time, with but the not same open trench. Uh, different trench. Yep. Each side of the road, uh, the water would be on the on the left side, I believe. Yep. Um, but because of traffic, we would want to get ahead with the sewer and then do the water. Right. If you were doing them simultaneously, you basically wouldn't have any room for cars yeah, to get cool. by. So we can only, you know, <laughs> and the pipe, right? I believe there's Excuse and the water trench, uh, the, the good thing about the water trench, uh, there's the elevation is pretty much going to be a constant. It'll be a certain depth, and it's quicker, very fast. Yeah, but so the sewer is different. Like a ditch, which you're just going in. No, uh, I wish it was that easy. Yeah, <laughs> no, two it's and not. A half feet? Uh, no, we have to get below frost, but oh, so but at really least we know it's going to be like a five to six foot deep trench. It's not going to be some of the trenches for the sewer could be as deep as you know, fairly deep, ten feet, twelve feet. Then you coming back up. Your dynamite supply yet? <laughs> yeah, it's on standby. No. Okay. Questions from the committee at this point? No, Questions no. from the audience? Well, fortunately, we got here late. We were waiting. Hanging a room while the meeting was going on. So we missed all of it. So. Well, you didn't much miss much because we were really late yeah. and we had just started. Basically, because they haven't, um, the landowner of the road is the town, and they haven't gotten approval from the town. I mean, correct me if well, I'm, you know. Yeah, we, so we, got so we really yeah. can't entertain it until then, so we PPW. just got a, a very basic overview, which you heard most of, actually. And it's also news to me that there's water now coming up as well as sewer. It's the first time I've heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. Yep, yeah. So they have yeah. water and sewer. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry I didn't come get you guys, but I wasn't sure what happened to you, and I, I saw yeah, so I we, saw you go in a room, and I thought, well, maybe they have TV in there or something. And I was going to actually go looking for you guys, but we found you. So it's just preliminary trying to get yeah. yeah. A little first discussion about the yeah. 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 initial feedback. And I'm sorry, I missed the timetable. When are you expecting to start? As soon as we can get the approvals, we're hoping maybe by we're starting now June 7th. We're thinking that maybe by the end of July we would have. I, I'm assuming it's going to take. Uh, the, the DPW comments we expect, I would think, fairly soon. But I know how with conservation, it's going to take several meetings to, f to address their concerns. It, and it still needs Board of Selectmen approval for the plans, too? They well, we have Board of Selectmen approval for the sewer extension for the allotment. In provided that everybody... Yeah. Well, right. And part of their approval was, you know, getting the 100% construction drawings, which these essentially are, signed off by the DPW. And so that's what we're in the process of. We have met with Greg a couple of times to review the plans, um, you know, pump station design and stuff like that. They took us to pump stations that are in town, both water and sewer. They showed us the ones that they liked, and we modeled our designs after the ones that they wanted. So um, we've been in contact. Uh, with both Greg and Shane, and Shane put us in touch with um, the supplier that the town uses for the pumps and pump stations. So we're getting, you know, the same pumps that the town uses for, you know, basically it's if they, the spare parts for one pump station can use for another and type of thing. So. Greg, was there a question like with the water line connection that the feed was enough? Greg kind of mentioned um, that was one thing that needed to be clarified, I think, too. Okay. With the uh, on stallion at the bottom by OSV, I think where you're connecting to the water line okay. was just making sure that the, the feed going in was enough. Okay. Um, I, I don't know all the details, but that was the one thing. Saying? I think the feed going in, the amount of oh, water. Feed. feed. Okay. Yeah, feed. Sorry. feed. Sorry, feed. Stuff. Okay, yeah. And so did, well, we did do a flow test, a hydrant flow test, and that uh, all that information has been sent to the okay. pump supplier. So he, you know, calculated out what the pumps need to be based on what the flow test revealed. So that was done, what, a month ago with the flow test? Yeah, and we just received the, the size of the booster pump that we would need. Yeah, so we just got a just whole package on the booster pump whole design from the manufacturer. So and other than that, it's just running water line, putting gates, and putting some hydrants. So. Um, the pump station on for both water and sewer or should be should be in line with what Greg and Shane want to see. But again, you know, obviously I can't speak for them. So, yeah. quick question: yeah. Yeah. In which lot is the pump station going on? Uh, if you want to go back to, you have to use a mic. We have to get a microphone over to them, please, yeah. Andy. Because it's, it's on TV. Yep. So. Yeah. Are you asking about the, the sewer pump station? Yes. Yeah. And please give your yep. name and yep. address. Yep. Rugen, three Dotty Road, Fistale. Well, my question is, uh, so the, boost, the sewer yeah. pump station is going to go down here, and it's basically so there's going to be residential lots, and then there'll be remainder lots, and it would be down on one of the remainder lots. The idea would be um, 
you know, donating a, a good portion of the property to the town as conservation. And so as it's going to be town land, I think a, just one portion of it uh, up by the roadway would be supporting the, the pump station. And that's down at the bottom of the hill? That's at, at the bottom of the hill. So there'd be a gravity line all the way down, um, and then towards Holland Road would be the pump station. And the, the water booster pump would be out in front of Sturbridge Village because that's where the water main currently ends, um, is out in front of the village. And so we basically, where it ends is where we put the booster station and you know, pump the water all the way up. Yeah, There'd be you. hydrants along the way per fi fire department requirements. And, and um, you know, stubs for the existing parcels. Anybody else have a question? All right. Continuation, gentlemen? I respectfully request a continuation so that way we can get town feedback and address it. I, I just wanted to add, too, and I oh. talked to Frank about this, but I mean, as part of when things come in, we do ask for comments from um, different departments. So planning did comment, and one thing we had talked about, too, is the tie-ins shown on the plan yep. going up Stallion. Oh. Um, there was no limit of work associated with that or what kind of work, trenching, et cetera. Right. Um, Stallion Hill is a scenic road, so there could be... Um, a, a filing that would be required if trees were to be removed or whatnot. Tree sure. Warden had just commented that um, even if trees weren't going to be removed, they're going to be damaged during work or whatnot, things like that, just to keep into consideration. So one thing that came out of our conversation about the tie-ins was um, they're looking at potentially moving them to the, the existing driveway location so that it won't be going through right. our swales that are of concern or um, I right. impacting. So the, I the idea would be, and um, I'm glad this was brought to our attention, is that you know, one side, the water, one side of the driveway would be the water line, the other side would be the sewer line, and basically run it parallel to the driveway, so that way you're in an existing stone wall opening, you know, the trees have been cleared, and so basically you're going under their culvert and then up to their houses, you know, in already cleared ways. So the stubs would be left basically at the end of the driveways, and I think that would solve a lot of the problem, or eliminate the need for any um, scenic road applications, yeah. you know. And, and, then and minimize any disturbance to any wetland areas that are part of that drainage ditch. And then also to that, um, there was no tie-in shown on Dowdy Road for the lots too. So that would be we would need to see that on our, our the final plans exactly. for approval too. We would need to know all of the work right. yep. proposed. Um, w one thing too with um, all the erosion issues, especially on Stallion Hill Road, mm -hmm. it would be really good to have a, a good work plan so we can ensure that what is being done daily, what precautions are going to be taken for maintenance of um, silt sacks that could fill up quickly, um, how often those are going to be checked. Um, around, I think, some of the, um, let me go back to my notes here. I think you're just showing waddles around, um, let me find my notes here waddles in some places but we might want to look at some more protective measures too sure, so yeah. maybe just kind of really thinking about what could go wrong and trying to come up with a good plan that prevents that i know there was um kind of a construction stormwater pollution prevention plan but it yeah. didn't really talk about like the laying of the pipe in the road it was more it seemed like it was kind of for like a development like loaming and seeding afterwards yeah. so just making sure that's kind of more right, um, more tightened up and tailored for to this that. project sure. just to ensure that um can, especially with the concerns on Stallion Hill, especially. Is the town going to upgrade the road? It's going to be resurfaced after. By the town? No. By us. By, By you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That would be. The other thing on the fee, that it's an unconservation question, but <coughs> the, the fees, are, the, are the people going to be required to tie in? No, the, the abutters, the, uh, that was the most commonly asked question on the hallway. Yeah. Um, the abutters are not required to tie in. The stubs will be available. There's no betterment fee because it's being paid for by the applicant, um, uh, Mr. O'Connell's paying for the stub, I uh, mean for the line. Um, the town does have, however, <coughs> if you choose to connect, you don't, there's no, no cost if you don't connect, but the town does have what they call a privilege fee. And so at the time, if a homeowner does decide he wants to connect to the stub that we're going to provide, he would, they would pay the town the privilege fee. That's, okay. And that money goes towards upgrading the treatment plant in the future. Okay. The cost of, the, the cost of bringing it to the house would be on the homeowner. Right. Yeah. One other note. Sorry, I'm just going through my Again, things Again, anybody? All right, I'm going to ask you to. Well, just one other thing. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it's my understanding from planning department that the hill on Dowdy Road might need to be lowered. Yeah, so we're that's a discussion. Yeah, okay. So, we're so let's, yeah, when you guys come back, let's make sure like everything on, it, yeah, it, is on the plans. For, for yeah. issues as well yep. as the, the sewer line if we need to 
getting rid of a lot of lead to put the sewer line in. We take the bump out. It, it helps with you know site distances and that sort of thing. Okay. So that's that's Andy's concerned. already covered that though. You said he had a reserve for the dynamite. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the places. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, at this point we like to continue so that we can uh, get comments back from the DPW as well as you know authorization. Is it two weeks going to be sufficient? What's the next meeting? Uh, two weeks, is June 21st is our next meeting, and then. I'd like to get on the two week agenda, and then if we, if we get close and we're not, it doesn't seem like we're getting all our requests to continue at that point in coordination with Becky, but I'd like to get okay. on it as a placeholder. If we all right, can, great. Um, provided if we do get comments, then we, you know, we're going to hop on and address this way. So okay. So. Okay, and I'll give you a time. I don't have the yeah, available okay. times in front of me, but. Okay. All in favor of a June 21st continuation? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank great. You. Good night. Thank you for coming, folks. You actually got as much information as we did. <laughs> yeah. And sorry, we didn't know you were. I'm glad that door unlocked. You <laughs> 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 mean it didn't work? Thank you. Okay, request for determination of applicability. Three meadow view the, lane. Okay, they were over there. What? Nothing, sorry. <laughs> Andy Kadumi, uh, construction of a single family home. You're next, Mark, in that room. <laughs> She's good. Not to scare you. The microphone is not for the room. The microphone is for the people at home watching. Okay. So when you talk, first, you have to give your name and address. And secondly, please refer to the microphone not to the beautiful faces you see right. here or the crowd, right. because the people at home really have trouble understanding if you don't speak directly into the microphone. Okay. Thank you. And you don't have to give your address, just your name. Okay. <laughs> typically, typically they give an address. We do that all naturally. Yeah, but that's in order to prove that they're okay. from Sturbridge or some other town. It's fine. My name is Randy Burkeum. I live at 12 Acorn Lane, Sturbridge. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I just know that um, Paul and Stephen didn't go to the site visit. Right. So I just wanted to give you an idea of where this, it's this yeah. lot right here, yeah. we have a, a wetland system here that feeds down. Um, is that an, a stream there? Yeah, either I, I don't know if that's necessarily considered it intermittent or not. I think it does feed out of a BBW, so it probably would have that. We do have um, wetlands that are delineated up to here, so I think it would meet intermittent yeah. classification. Very de defined. It's been there a long time. Figure down through. Yeah. You know. Thank you, Becky. You're welcome. I can talk about it if you yeah, want I don't me know to. What That's you want all right. Me to say, so. All right, <laughs> so it's, it's well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't supposed to talk about it. What is your plan? Well, I'm just yeah. trying. Our to plan help. is done this shown before. Here. I'm just trying to help you. Construct a new yeah. single-family house with a. Uh, it's, it's hard to see. They have a 12 by 24 deck, 12 by 33 deck, uh, and a 20 by 40 swim in-ground swimming pool behind it, which I believe. It's showing. It's hard to see on there. Yeah, it's just the right bottom there. left hand corner. Bottom left hand corner sticks it in over that one hundred foot. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Right there. That's the part that is the only part that goes uh, approaches the one hundred foot buffer zone there. All right. So, so. to add to that, so um, right. So so Randy came in. It is. Um, all lawn that's been maintained as lawn by the original owner um, across the street so it's th there is some brush that's growing up over here but it is a, a maintained lawn um, within the subdivisions around here when he first came in I pulled out the original plans for the subdivision to help kind of see if there was something back there um, and that's when we did see that there was something so Jalbert went out there and did the engineering for this and did locate the edge of the, yeah. the wetland back here and kind of confirmed where it was. So we're looking at, here's our 50 foot buffer. Like you said, the 100 foot buffers here, all of this is currently lawn. 
Um, it's only the corner portion of the swimming pool um, and this fence that is within there. So I recommended filing the request for determination of applicability because of that small amount of work within the 100 foot buffer zone and then maybe this is a bit of disturbance being a house within our 200 foot um but because it was lawn um i thought that the rda would be okay for that we did use a site visit on tuesday walked it it does slope down towards this wetland um right now um and it's also sloping this way obviously down the road so Becky, because it was lawn are you going to consider it as previously disturbed versus right a forested yeah. site yes there yeah. is are there any trees coming down no, no there's only a small portion of the brush in the side which is mostly like small i think From it's like what poison I understand, sumac. the <laughs> current owner Great. cuts it down every year he just hasn't done it <coughs> what i also want to say is it used to be a building site there used to be an existing farmhouse there i don't know how long ago that's just what i was told and it's been taken down since so there was a structure there. but it was down on the <laughs> flat wasn't it ed what the old farmhouse was down on the flat i don't remember any old farmhouse oh it's a long time ago <laughs> i'm young oh <laughs> <laughs> so but the house that was pro is proposed it's in the middle of the grass it's not near any of the trees or anything right so. and and the, the only thing they're talking about cutting is some poison sumac up on the uh, yeah. up in the upper left hand corner well there's staghorn sumac in there too yeah it's not just the poison that's still well within the blue. But um, I'm not going to tell you that. So Becky, do you have any comments on it? Um, I mean, I think we can condition it if we're looking at it um, mostly under our, our bylaw. I think we can add appropriate <coughs> conditions. There are erosion controls shown on the plan. Yeah. I think most of the soils can be taken off site except for what might be used to build up the driveway. Yeah, so whatever comes out of the foundation, we can put in the front of the house because it does slope down from basically the street to the back of the house, and I think it's about a four foot drop in elevation. So theory would be to build up the front so you're not driving down your driveway into the house to level it off a little bit because it's going to be a full walkout. So it's going to be up four or five feet in the front anyway, and then slope down. Mm -hmm. So that's a thought. Is there a DEP number for this? No, this is a request for determination of applicability, so there'll be no DP file number. I think that we can add some good conditions in there that would typically with our pre-construction meeting and, you know, monitoring of the erosion controls and making sure someone's responsible for that throughout construction. Um, Randy's company does have open orders of conditions with us on Warren Road, so they're familiar with what our conditions and what we're looking for, so um, I'm not too concerned that he doesn't understand what we'd be looking for and making sure that it's implemented throughout the project. And I think it's um, another thing just to point out too with like having your property there, um, that it, you know, anything beyond what we approve, you'd need to come back to conservation if you're working within the buffer zone. Um, and then we would probably add a condition for like draining of pool water. Um, so that way you're, you're doing it so it's not gonna impact the wetlands too, so. Sure. Where the existing cops of scrub shrub bushes crap is yeah um are you planning on putting in any shrubbery in that area i think that and it's hard to tell right now because this all four corners are staked uh and the front right hand corner is significantly up in there so i think the house is going to be i know the house is going to be into that a little bit because it's within the, the 20 foot well that's what i was thinking you know it's going to be about 20 of it's going to be going into it but around the corners of the house there that that particular copse of material does attract some amount of wildlife okay and there isn't very much in that area that attracts any wildlife because everybody has eight miles of lawn per house what i would prefer from the conservation perspective is you put some berry bearing shrubs or some trees in that relative area okay. so that it's an attractant <coughs> to wildlife okay is there any planned encroachment further encroachment on the the wildland as far as cutting no there doesn't there isn't anything else that needs to be done yeah. it's it's okay. current it's, it's a lawn I right mean, yeah. but i mean the goal would be not to disturb as much as you possibly can because that's less work 
that you have to do. You don't have to reseed. Right, right. I, I guess I'm just saying that I don't. I want to make sure that there isn't any cutting. You know, in no. That there's. I think there's literally it. one tree. I don't know if it's a fruit tree. Uh, it's it's inside the 100 uh, foot back towards the 50 foot. Right. And to my knowledge, that tree stay in. Okay. Well, it is completely covered in poison ivy. That's the only thing. And we do have small children, so that would be my one concern. Like, sure. how do we dispose of the poison ivy? Or, but it's up into the branches and everything too. So I don't. Exactly. Wait until fall when the leaves turn bright red and then you'll appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for planting the berries and the things for the wildlife. I've got no idea what to do with that. Well, the good news is you can just go around the base with a weed warper and kill the whole, all the poison ivy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a hazmat suit first. It's all down exactly. low, then you get the problem. Um, this, I don't have, I have no real issues with it, um, with the plant. One part of me would say, you know, we could push the house closer to the road, but I'm probably if I was building it, I wouldn't. Um, yeah. But I would say that you should stop mowing at the 50-foot buffer. In other words, don't consider this to be your yard. Con consider that to be Mother Nature's yard. Stop mowing and let it, uh, you know, grow up. So that'll protect the wetland. Um, from drainage off your property, um, and you're not—you got a fence here anyway, right? Oh, the pool fence. That's not the pool fence. That's the. Where's the pool fence? Up a little bit. Up a little bit. It's what's this, this here? This thing. That's right the here. erosion yeah. control. Right oh, there. erosion control. So I know the owner right now. I think the property. I think it stops right about here. Yeah. And the grass is a little bit longer here, so he does stop mowing it. Yeah, maybe about five, ten feet short of the woods there. Um, and I think that's basically just because that's where the property line is. But I did notice the other day that it is a little bit taller grass here, and he mows this pretty yeah. regularly. Is this the property line? No, nope. no, that's this a step is. back. Yeah. Right over. Oh, so sorry. at yeah. least this right here is—it's hard to tell without being there, but. There is a section about five feet that is not mowed down as yeah, far as the what I'm the asking is that this section be not mowed. There's Ever. No, there's no reason to mow it, and it'll give you good wildlife. Ask the question louder. <laughs> <laughs> just, just never mow it? Never mow it. Okay. God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Ed forbid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it still would leave a lot of lawn area yeah. outside the pool fence if you took and it's within the buffer that. zone to the wetland so you'd be you'd be protecting the wetland so that when turtles want to come out and nest they can do it in that as exa as in one example and the kids will love that yeah, <laughs> yeah. they'll love it till they get ticks and they get lyme disease and they have everything <laughs> else because they're playing in that tall grass right. so are you going to put the kids like in danger <laughs> the kids See, in danger that would be the definition of a helicopter parent <laughs> <laughs> so okay yeah. are you talking just during i uh, know you said forever what i i was just wanted to make sure like during construction forever forever okay as just just a, a conservation buffer. What about doing a line of sh to make it look a little bit better? Yeah. Because if I was be building a big expensive house, in a sense. Right? If, yeah. if I was building a big expensive house and I was going to live here, I wouldn't want to just look out my backyard to a nice lawn. I would want some kind of boundary. So maybe, what about putting like a bed of mulch and some shrubs or something at the fifty foot? The you know, 50 just to dress it up because yeah, this is all tall it, grass. He's talking about in the 50 foot. No, like what right if, here. What if, you know, why don't we move the house up out of the out of the 100 feet? So the pool's out of the 100 feet. It's very, it's it's almost. I mean, you have to have the setback. It's already at. It's at 33. Yeah, I mean, you can't have. You can move it up three feet. <laughs> you could move it up three feet. Three feet away from more away from the wetland. Well, I guess we could just leave that on mow. Like, don't mow it, right? What? Well, just don't mow this. I, Is that the two options? I, I have well, I have no problem with them putting uh, some kind of um, mulch and shrubs and stuff. Yeah, a All delineation the between. Yeah. But he's right. talking about in it rather than rather than. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, 
What, right ten, now, there ten, isn't anything there except mold grass. Ten, 10 feet into the 50 foot? I don't know how long it's been like that, but it's been like that for, it sounds like the house has been gone, so I feel like it's been like that for, and I don't know the like, exact time. Well, you know, years. leaving it would be an improvement, like, so you There's think of it, you're balancing off, you know, you are building on this site, whereas it's just lawn, it's taking in um, rainwater, you know, it's infiltrating some versus just runoff, now we have impervious surface, so it's kind of like a, a balance, I guess, is that you are having an impact, but maybe we can do something that's going to be a little bit better closer, so it's kind of like that compromise a, a little bit, but I could see some type of landscape edge that you could have and that would be good to keep it delineated so you'd know kind of where to stop mowing or whatever but what if we were to plant some of the natural vegetation that would already be there back in right on that line and then it grows and it makes a wall and everything including happy. shrubs if you wanted yeah okay. put those that, that shrubs and Very eat the blueberries shrubs. when so you know like blueberries and raspberries and things right. like that yep. the animals of life okay. well raspberries. what i was explaining to you with the raspberries you don't like the you don't like the poison ivy the raspberries are more aggressive <laughs> but the, the mulch <laughs> might do exactly the same <laughs> thing i think so yeah. and what what the chairman is trying to do is to protect the wetland and that 50-foot buffer is designed for that. If you look around the lakes property, you'll hear them howl the same way you did when you said, always, forever? <laughs> <laughs> um, because we are trying to protect the wetland. The mulch will do basically the same thing if it has the shrubbery on it. Mm -hmm. And if it happens to be berry-bearing shrubbery, you get the benefit of the beauty, and the animals get the benefit of the food. We'll share the food, right? So, yeah, you can share. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. You won't get that fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> but it is a, it is right, a trade off, it. Yeah. and the 50 foot does not get mowed that way. Let's bring it back yeah, to order. It Anybody is. have any? Uh, it is back to order. We're trying to explain your position. I know. It's I, difficult. I think, I think my position is out of order. Let's, let's move along here. Um, anybody in the audience? I'd like to close the public hearing. All right. Uh, a motion to motion second discussion second all, all in favor so public the, hearing is closed oh, sorry so okay. request for determination i'd recommend a negative number three all right um so the work described in the request is within the buffer zone uh, but will not alter the area subject to the protection with the conditions that we talked about adding that buffer in in a couple other like during construction conditions um and also that's a positive number five that is subject to the local bylaw. Great. That's all I got. Make a motion we approve that. Do have a second? Second. Order of conditions. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Good Thank luck you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, get somebody to weed romp around that tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Randy will do it. Yeah. Have a good night. Thanks. All right. We have some letter permits, and I think, Frank, you're the only one here for your letter <laughs> permit, so. I figured I'd stick around, so. <laughs> get that one done, and then, anyone else here for letter permits? No? Okay, all for the. You're okay, just here for the letter. entertainment benefit. You know, hey, you learn things, you know. <laughs> Let's make it fast. Hey, you're you you a limit already. <laughs> yeah. Pick up on a few things, so. <laughs> So uh, Old Surbridge Village, um, <clears throat> from another property, actually salvaged a historic piggery, which they actually have all in pieces right now um, down by the kiln and pottery, and they're actively working on restoring the timbers to it. So they have all the timbers disassembled. Um, they're going to do a, uh, a concrete foundation below ground and then a fieldstone foundation above ground and put the old piggery on top of that fieldstone foundation. Um, <clears throat> so it's basically going... Um, do you want me to keep going in the pictures? Oh, there's a sign. Uh, there's an existing sign here somewhere, and it's going, I think, right in front of that existing sign. So there'd be a building right here, and then a fenced area, and then the pigs can eat around. Right now, the sheep actually come out and graze, um, and so they would, there'd be a building right here. Um, <coughs> we had submitted to Natural Heritage, because we are in Natural Heritage area, we submitted to them. We got a no take letter, or no adverse um, impact letter, so um, they didn't have any issue with the project. Um, we are basically at the outside edges of the buffer zone jurisdictional areas so that's why we came for a letter permit and what is the outside edge uh, I the corner of the i have the plan here yeah, corner okay, of the is building it? is within the 200 foot yeah um the piggery area which would go within an existing ag area um 
So the 200 foot, yep. you can see, the, sorry, it's, it's hard to see the line in. just clips the building, yep. Yep. but the little fence in area what is building is that there? This is the one they're proposing. That's, one that's the piggery. This one? What's that? It says pottery, but I think that's the, the blacksmith shop, isn't it? it is, no, it's a pottery it's shop. It's pottery. It's, it's up on the upper hill. The kiln's over here. All right. Here. So yeah. now I'm over here. Yep. Oh, it's not where I thought it was yeah. either. No. Okay, it's I was thinking it was. It's a lot further away than what you thought it was. You guys are well with this. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I have no motion. problem with it. I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that we approve of the um, program that has been presented to us from Old Service Village. Because the only question that we see, had see <laughs> when we first looked so at it on so Tuesday building, so. was whether it was going to be down in the area where you had the sinkholes developed. Oh, and we would have had a problem if it was in those areas. Yeah. But up on that slope like that, it's yeah, far um, enough away yeah, from a, everything. Yeah, there's a berm. I think basically we should a give them here. a letter permit and be done with it. Anybody in the audience like to speak on this? Okay. A second. What? I second this motion. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Now you're done with me. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. So, have a good night. So Perth Piggery I've approved. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Times are getting better. <laughs> so we do have a couple other letter permits, but the people that are here are for um, an informal discussion about the Yogi Bear um, Campground, if you want to do that first. Let's do that yeah. first, the people are here for. Yeah. 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 Steve, is this going to be an every two week presentation now? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is Mr. Philip Moreau. I believe you all know who Scott is. Uh, I'm Steve Brissett from Summit Engineering. Uh, Mr. Moreau has recently purchased the Yogi Bear Campground, and he is in the process of rejuvenating it. And I will let Phil take it from here. Push the microphone a little bit, Steve. Oh. And I'll let Phil take it from here. Uh, good evening, and it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, I feel I'm kind of in many ways getting back to my roots. My dad was from New Hampshire, went to the University of New Hampshire. I toured, first saw Sturbridge Village with my sister about uh, 30 or 40 years ago, and it was a great event. My sister has since passed on, so I have nothing but fond memories of Sturbridge. My uh, business is called RV Management Services. I have been in the RV industry for over 22 years. Currently, we own uh, nine properties throughout the United States, primarily in the Mid-Atlantic and in the uh, Southwest. And uh, I put together, I know that y'all don't know me from Adam, but I hope that this is the beginning of a quite a ambitious project to buy a property that has so much potential for greatness in an area that is absolutely stellar and is uh, well located for the RV industry. And uh, I put together, I'll leave you all with a, <coughs> a book that basically tells who we are and shows the location of our properties and our overall game plan for this 76 acre property that has uh, not been feeling much love over the last 30 or 40 years. So we will come in and absolutely show this property the love fundamentally our plan is to create a five-star RV resort. Of our nine properties, all of them uh, are highly rated. Uh, four of them are rated perfect by Good Sam, 10, 10, 10, and join 137 other parks out of 8,000 in the United States that are rated 10, 10, 10. So we're, we're the guy that buys the ugly home and fixes it up, except we buy the RV parks and put in millions of dollars into them. We understand the RV business. We understand who the RVer is. The average RVer is a 46-year-old person with a family of four 
who likes to throw the dog in the RV with his kids, his two kids, and head out and have quality time. The RV industry is thriving. RV sales last year were 504,000, up 17% last year alone after eight consecutive years of, of uh, growth for, since 2008. We understand what the RV wants, what, what the RVer wants. He wants a clean place in a secure, safe environment. He wants activities for his kids and family, and we deliver that in spades. We are all about family, friend, uh, family values and family fun, and <coughs> we've been uh, very successful in the parks that we have gone into various jurisdictions and municipalities, work closely with the municipality, and have created a real asset to the community and an asset to the RVers. Okay. Here, our basic, uh, this property is 76 acres with 396 sites currently. Our plan is to reduce the number of sites to about 340. Uh, I've looked closely at the buildings and frankly, they are, to, to rehabilitate the buildings would be uh, more expensive, more headache, and still marginally uh, attractive. So our plan is to create new buildings, a new store and reception area, uh, new bathhouses that have private bathroom suites as opposed to the high school shower room where you're standing butt naked in front of all your buddies. And we have done this, uh, every building that we are proposing to build on this property we have built elsewhere and I have included pictures of the buildings that we're going to be building that we've built elsewhere. So we've got our hands full here and I need your help and I need your guidance in making this property a five-star 10-10-10 resort. That's our business plan. We have the capital to do it. We have the will to do it. And we're ready to start rolling. Uh, so that, as an overview, uh, is one, reduce the sites, two, build new buildings that are necessary for assembly buildings, store, fitness center, billiard room, private bathhouses that have private bathroom suites, and other first-class amenities. We will uh, supplement all of those amenities, of course, with all of the outdoor activities. That would include pickleball, volleyball, basketball, bocce, horseshoes, canoeing, kayaking. And we'll do all this with respect for the beautiful eight acre Pine Lake. We will be renaming the resort Pine Lake RV Resort. And we're excited to uh, move forward with the town of Sturbridge and with the uh, commission here. Prior to making the substantial commitment that we've made to buy this property, we've met with town officials and received a very enthusiastic response. And we're uh, pleased to be here tonight by way of introduction to say, hi, how you doing? And uh, I'll leave you with uh, some late night reading that I know you'll enjoy. And I'm, I'm here to, uh, and I'll, I'll be living here for the next year. Uh, I have hired the best professionals I can find to help. Steve Brissett, Scott Morrison are already on board. We have Dave Formato with on-site engineering. We've met with the uh, DEP people. We've met with them as far back as February. And we have a plan to solve the sewer issue that has been lingering out there for 
years and years and years, which is frankly abominable. Well, it's mind boggling. I, I kept saying, where is the rest of the file? And there was no file. There, there was, it's like, okay, but we're going to solve the problem by creating our own wastewater treatment facility. And uh, we have already tested soils and found a really incredible permeable uh, suitable location at the uh, at the property uh, what I'd like to do is if I could just buy another couple of minutes and turn it over to Steve and Scott and let them kind of give you a little feel for what we've been doing uh, pursuant to some conversations we've had with uh, Jean Boubon and what she might want on the planning side of things and uh, what Scott would want on the uh, part of the uh, lake management uh, and preservation of the lake, the, sh the sacred shoreline of the lake, as well as the little wetland area over by Route 15. Okay. So, gentlemen, thank you. Becky, do you can put up the existing? The, yep, the one you sent me today? Yes, yep. please. And we'll might be a little bit too much but okay um apologize for the drawings and their their thing in work there's no final drawings on the project but th this is basically what we have here right now here's his river road right here north is straight up and down this is the main entrance that comes into the park as it exists you got your existing there's an existing residence here there's a little barn and a petting zoo over here this is a pool area patio bathroom um, and then this is just all sites all in down. Here's a beach down over in here. A little bit of boat rental going down. Um, what you actually have an application, I believe, in front of you now that will be heard on the 21st for the actual treatment of Pine Lake, along with the um, delineation of the wetlands. There's approximately 4,800 lineal feet of wetland flags out here. That have all been mapped they're not on this plan they actually are on the um, other plan that she has that will pull <coughs> up and you do have them for your review you're actually going to be doing a site walk on the 19th um, this site right now or it was in the past there was a lot of seasonals in here there were sheds decks docks slabs all stuff um, that park right now is almost perfectly cleaned out um, there's one unit that remains down here on the lake that because of trees needing to come down to get it out, it still sits there. Um, we can talk about that at the site walk on the 19th because their desire is to get it out of there as soon as they can. Been around for Whether a minute it be or two. <laughs> but I, I understand it's been there for about 40 years. All right. Um, so other than that, oh, and also existing on property are two existing comfort stations. Uh, there's one here that's known locally as Crow's Hill and there's another one further down the property and there's another pool and snack bar right in this area right over here and that's pretty much the extent of the building development within the site other than a miniature golf course which is in the far northwest corner if you could Becky up top left the miniature golf course the miniature golf course is actually built over a lot of the <coughs> existing reaching facility in the site and is going to be the location of the future wastewater treatment disposal area. Um, they're in the process of getting DEP's approvals to site it all over here. Um, they're well under the way of getting the approval that this is adequate siting. Uh, it's gonna be a little while before we actually get DEP approval for construction, but once you get the siting approval, it's just a matter of logistics of uh, going through their numbers. All that being said, can we go to the proposed? Mm -hmm. You were just really kind in one of your descriptions. You it, called one of the buildings a comfort station. <laughs> <laughs> you must never have <laughs> visited it. No. <laughs> I, we, we have some photos, and I will pay you $100 to go in there and take a shower. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so, so to discuss a little bit, uh, I think, Becky, if you stayed zoomed out at this point, okay. I'll talk a little bit about the resource areas that are involved here. Do we go a little further out? or Yeah, that, that's, that should be fine. 
So as you come in, again, here's the driveway coming into the main park. Sorry for all the congestion. There's a lot of proposal stuff written on top of existing, but this is just for our concept and discussions with you folks. There's a perennial stream that comes in here that is the discharge of a little duck pond here that literally does house ducks. There's another perennial stream that outfalls from the dam of Pine Lake that feeds duck pond. And then there's another very large swamp to the south on the abutting property. There's a perennial stream that falls out of that that actually feeds Pine Lake. There's also an isolated land subject to flooding over here right off of the side of Route 15. And that is the extent of the delineation. Now, we didn't delineate the uh, east side of the pond over here. They have no plans of doing anything over here. There's walking paths over there. It's steep slopes. It's all wooded. There's really no plans at this point to expand anything over there. So no delineation or anything has been done over there. Okay, Becky, if we could zoom in now up to the entrance area up in here. So as we saw before, there's an existing resort building here, which we're going to tear down and replace. There's an existing bathhouse and pool that's all getting replaced. We're not, not really replaced, just uh, removed. Removed. Okay. With uh, with uh, open open yeah. uh, landscaping, uh, beautifully landscaped open lounge areas, no buildings. Yeah. In between, because we we're right. gonna have these conference buildings. There's gonna be one here, one over the existing tennis court. Um, assuming the delineation is approved as it is mapped out, and that you'll review on the 21st. Your riverfront area exists right up in this area right here. This is your 200 foot buffer zones. Your hundreds are over here. Um, your riverfront is also over here, associated with this one. Um, this petting zoo is totally, actually it is gone. The buildings remain, but the buildings are to be removed as well. Um, and it the, actually the buildings it has will been go. seeded because when they took the fencing down, there was nothing left, so that has been seeded. There's straw waddles along the shore where there was no vegetation because of the animals. Um, so th these are all things that are being done in the process. And the residents will go? And the resident, yeah, and in the proposal, this residence will go. In the disturbance of where that residence was, we're proposing a small parking area of about five sites. It's for people, quick business in, out of the office, the store. We're also proposing about 30 spots up here to be used in conjunction with these uh, convention conference centers. Um, as Mr. Moreau has explained to me, these are used primarily for gatherings of the uh, RVers, the campers. Rally, they get together, rally groups, rally, rally buildings. Yeah, you know, they get together and they do their Christmas in July and their little get togethers and potluck dinners. And that's what they use these buildings primarily for. The resort center, as he said, will have billiard room, I believe, and the fitness center will be involved in that. And there's also some parking provided down here. This area here is going to remain as is. It's just going to be sites the way it is. Um, up in this area with the addition of the buildings, oh, excuse me, there's an existing maintenance building right over here that I met, forgot to mention at the beginning. They are going to add another storage building over there. Now the storage building is going to be used initially for storing construction supplies where they're doing this renovation project. And in the long term, once that is all done, that's going to be the winter storage. This park will not operate in the winter time. It's only going to be um, in season. I don't know exactly what months, April through or March through or whatever. I don't know. That's up to Mr. Moreau, but it will not be open in winter time. The water systems will be pickled and um, you know, drain back. Um, so in this proposal up here, we're proposing um, a lot of drainage changes. Um, there's drainage that exists over here that just discharges out on the street over here and runs down the road and into the ponds, comes down this road and into the brook. And um, there's a few structures down here in this parking lot. One of them buried. Uh, hasn't functioned in a long time. So, I mean, just the, there's a lot of things just running all over and taking silt and dirt and just eroding everything around the pond. So up here, we're proposing to grab all this storm water. We're gonna do the typical treatment infiltrator, clean this stuff up, 
check our point discharges, make sure we got no increase in flows because of the development that we're doing, and uh, create a couple. Uh, there's going to be two additional point discharges the way we're seeing it right now in our preliminary thoughts. One of them is going to be over here in this particular area, and there'll be another one down on the lake. And I'll show you um, that one because that one actually is going to create, it's going to replace a couple of areas that just wash into it, all right? And that area is right down <coughs> over here. Um, there's runoff that runs down these hills, down these roads, comes across the beach, just washes the beach into the pond. And um, so again, we're proposing to reshape these roads. We're gonna tilt them so that they actually s slope uphill. We're gonna put in some infiltration trenches along the sideline. That's gonna actually do a couple of things for us. Like uh, most of these roads are probably 14 to 16 feet wide. The fire department is looking for us to give them 20 feet uninstructed. Doesn't mean it has to be 20 feet of pavement or road surface, but 20 feet of opening. So if we've got 15, 16 feet and we dig up three feet over here and put a trench in and cover it with stone, you know, we're 1920. So we, we're approaching what they're looking for. So that's the concept with a lot of this um, trenching along the side of the roads. And then these things too, they're gonna be, you know, perforated pipe and stone and then we're going to take them through again uh, an underground detention facility let it all settle out and then we'll get some discharge points coming out of that um, this one discharge point here if you see these little red arrows right there now these are uh, areas that scott noted when he was out there um doing the delineation that there was active erosion and runoff you know taking place and that things should be addressed from. And uh, I think that's all included in your report that he submitted with the, uh, with the NOI that you're gonna be reviewing. Um, so I guess what we're, um, there are a few other, I mean, we're totally replacing the, the comfort stations, the two that exist. We're actually constructing four additional ones on a smaller scale. <coughs> One of them's gonna be over here in what is known as Village Circle. Uh, there's no structures, over, well, I'm going to say there's no structures. We're proposing a 20 by 27 comfort station over there, or bathhouse. There exists about a half a dozen concrete slabs over there, um, ranging in size from 12 by 12 to 12 by 34. Those are all coming up. We have really no method of infiltrating our roof drains for this new building. The water table's at about 18 to 20 inches over here. So we really have no way of recharging. So we're figuring that we're going to take out 400 square feet of concrete, you know, or, or you know, 1,600 square feet or 2,000, and give you 400 square feet of a building back. That's the kind of approach we want to take with some of these complicated areas. Um, the sites along um, the Lakeshore Drive, actually, could you pan south, Becky? Yeah. Okay, now you can see all these little pinks and blues in here. These are all the trees that we've gone out. We've detailed about 10 acres of locating trees, uh, anything over five inches, five inches and up, all along the shoreline. Mr. Moreau is aware of the fact that what exists there for sites is what he has for sites. He's not looking to expand any sites along this area. Um, they need to be redressed. Some of them need to be reshaped. What, what um, incorporates a site? Uh, basically, we're looking at 12 by 50 <coughs> for the unit and about a 10 by 20 to park a car. Okay. All right. But the site 12 by 50 is concrete pad? No, no. no. Um, they use either a trail mix process surface or he's done in the past, which he's not too sure how will last up here in New England is a they call it an AB base in California, which is basically a dense grade in, here in Massachusetts. Road uh, base. Road base. Um, that's what he's talking about for sites. There's a few sites here, specifically up on Village. What else does it include? Does it include a table, a picnic table? It has a picnic table and a fire ring. A, a fireplace. Does it include an uh, electric hookup? Yes, he's got electric water. cable and water. Water, and sewer, and electric will be at every site. At every site. At every site. Right now, uh, that's not the case, not even close to being the yeah. case. In fact, there's only 17 out of 
396 sites that have 50 amp electric, which is doesn't work in today's environment. Yeah. So we're, we're going to create our own electric distribution system. We're already a primary customer with the local utility. We've created a electric distribution systems at five of our other parks. We've worked with everybody from MetEd to Arizona Power Supply, APS, Are you to, doing the, to Duke Power. And we'll, we'll, we'll have a very, a very nice electrical system where we can provide 50, 30, and 20 amp service to each and every site. Fundamental to the business. Are these all RV sites or are there going to be tent sites too? Uh, Tinters, uh, I've, I've been asked that question by other municipalities and I'm, I, I can only be honest, we are not big on tenters because they are messy, messy people and they're frankly disrespectful of the property. And we've had that happen to us many, many times. So in our plan, there are no tent sites. Okay. I just wanted to know from a vehicle standpoint, how many, you know, if they're all vehicles or if that's, okay, right. thanks. <clears throat> and I, I, I hate to sound, you know, I, I like tenting myself, but in these parks, it just puts such a strain on the systems. It's, it's not pretty. Okay. All right. So, um, so, so as far as the shoreline goes, yes, there are going to be some trees here and there that are going to have to be removed. We have not identified those yet. We haven't gone into that kind of a detail up and down the shoreline. Um, it's, it's literally him and I are going to have to walk and Scott and go, you know, we can get it like this if we take out this. Or, <coughs> okay, well, if we tweak it over here, we can just take out something less, you know. Um, it, that whole dance needs to be done yet. We're, we're not there yet. It, um, it should be minimal because there are sites, sites there existing. already that have served for 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we want to take care of is currently this particular area. No, no um, it, uh, oh, there's another point in this project. There's 36 cottages in here currently. Those are all going away. The cottages are all leaving. There's concrete slabs under every one of them. They're all going. They, they're for sale if you're interested. <laughs> all right. Um, so this particular area up here, now this is the one area that we are proposing to reshape, remodel. We're actually going to add another row of units up in this particular area. Now, behind these cottages, there's a slope that needs attention that we're going to address. The guys are out there today detailing this so that we can come up with the right solutions. Uh, a lot of these, these cottages where the area was just dug out and then they just plopped it in there. and what you got is what you got it looks like a sand pit behind them uh, there's some that they've tried to stabilize but it hasn't worked out so well um, there's other ones the walls there's retaining walls all along lakeshore here they're doing a pretty good job but we need to address because we've got to make these things somewhat accessible which they're not at the moment so when you go up to the top of the hill there's a big mound and then it drops down and it flattens out into this nice area up here where the water collects well so what they got is they got a bunch of catch basins up in here and then they got this pipe that goes right out and dumps into the lake over there. So in our proposal, even though we're not adding any buildings up here or anything, is we're gonna put in as much underground infiltration and pick up as much drainage coming off of all these hills that we can gather, treat it here, recharge it, minimize what's running down that eight inch pipe right now going out into the lake. Um, other than that, every building that we're proposing, there's another bathhouse down here in Campfire. Um, we're proposing roof infiltration on them. There's very uh, little other drainage on a site. Campfire, there's a, I think there's three catch basins up there. Um, we don't, can't even find the outlet to two of them. There's two that connect together. We don't even, we can't even find it. Um, the water apparently goes down fairly well. There's another one, it's got a four inch crushed pipe coming out of it. No real sign of erosion at the end of that either. So I mean, I, a lot of that water up there, it is sandy. Um, 
I dug some pits all over this place. There was only a couple areas that were bad. It was Village, and that was the main parking lot by the resort center. The water tables were high. Um, the rest of it is all good sands, good drainage. We, we think we, the infiltration we, will. We went down, I think, uh, 27 feet over in the miniature golf area where we're going to be uh, discharging, you know, fully uh, purified affluent. And we didn't hit any water, nothing, all sand. Great permeability. That whole area used to be a giant sand pit, going from there all the way to Kelly Road, because oh, Kabinsky, Kabinsky took his livelihood from 1920 to about 1945, yeah. right there. Wow! Well, you you can see it here on his site. Um, if you could pan north just a little bit, Becky, this whole area right in here, what I believe is Cindy Circle, that is probably an old excavation. That's right excavation. There. Um, and then just below this isolated land subject to flooding down in here, this is all rock and blast <coughs> rock from the highway. It's flat yeah. as a pancake with all, all blast rock all around it. And it gorgeous to look at. Um, not very practical to do anything with it, but um, so it, it, it is interesting when you get out in there, though. Is there no proposal? Um, so there's an isolated land subject to flooding here. We talked about this area a little bit. Is there no proposal to do... Any work in this area? Yeah, the only thing we got going right now is the replacement of this uh, comfort station right here. Um, there's one already there. There's something. Same footprint. Yeah, yeah. There, there's one already there. Now, uh, same footprint or a little bit smaller or a little or narrower, smaller. slightly longer. Something. It's basically the same building, same place. Um, square footage disturbance the same. Right. Right. Square footage disturbance about the same. Yeah, it should be about a little the same. less actually. Yeah. Move this along. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, all the bathhouses got a little bit less between the two that were existing. One of them extremely less, actually. Um, I do have this particular plan in print for you folks, if anybody's interested in looking at it with Phil's book. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, we could yeah, definitely give you a copy for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can bring it with um, us. Yeah. But. I, I think that's the extent of our presentation, I, you know, as far okay. as my part. I mean, I'm sure Scott's got some things to add to it about the benefits of what we're doing as far as the storm water and, and uh, yeah and I, I, w I would like scott to address our approach with the our best asset and that is the, the lake, lake. The lake. Yeah. yeah so i guess the primary scott, can you give him the gotta uh, have the microphone yep. just sorry to do that to you just for the record scott morrison from echo tech um kind of the primary asset it, you know obviously is pine lake They've made, um, we've made an application. We're looking to uh, do some treatment for um, milfoil, an invasive aquatic. Um, we have milfoil there now? Yeah. Um, so we've, we've filed um, solitude lake management, prepared a document which was included in the notice of intent application. We'll have people, somebody from solitude at the next meeting to discuss kind of the details of the, the aquatic management plan. Um, so we, they've already made the investment. They're planning on doing that work. Um, in conjunction with that, as Steve said, they're going through and doing some improvements. Primary one is, is the septic improvements. So they're you know, collecting all the sewer, treating it, and then discharging it in one location, uh, you know, Title V compliant or the state compliant uh, uh, system for that. The other thing, as Steve also detailed, is erosion you know where there's discharge we made notes of that provided that information to Steve Steve's working on kind of a comprehensive evaluation to see what we can do if there's areas where we can infiltrate terrific if there's areas that we can do some pretreatment um, and prevent some of the, the sediment and, and discharges from happening that's also going to benefit both of those are going to provide some significant water quality improvement benefits um, the other thing, there are there will be some trees that have to be cut. You'll go out there and you'll see that there's places out here that I think have more trees than some forests. You know, it's this, there's some dense areas. So, you know, we do have to do some tree cutting, but there'll still be significant amounts of trees um, on the site. And at the other, the last thing is there, there was a, a petting zoo up in this area um, that's been removed. As part of the project, there will be, uh, presumably, we'll be able to potentially do some replanting of some areas. 
you know, within close proximity to the pond to provide some type of buffer. So there's a lot of pieces to this, but there are also quite an extensive amount of environmental benefits, I think, through this process by providing all these upgrades um, to this facility. Great. Um, We'd be happy to answer questions. Well, see if there's any in the audience first. Fortunately, all of these people are 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 on this. <laughs> this is Dan White, whose uh, dad uh, actually sold the uh, RV resort to Sean and Ann Finnecane back in 1982. Dan's been on site since zero days. I guess. 1966. Oh. Wow. His knowledge of the infrastructure and how the whole park kind of operates is great. really great. And th this is our couple that lives on site and helps manage our operations both inside and outside. Okay. I'll just say that, uh, and I'll make this very brief, it is easy to get so caught up in all of these nuances that have to be done to make the infrastructure of this property correct. But without the right infrastructure, the property would never function. We are committed to create the infrastructure. And in my overview letter, where I identify the key people with our company and identify our, in a very short uh, area, what our approach will be with the wastewater treatment facility, the water, the electric, the Wi-Fi and cable TV, the landscaping, the lighting, the signage, the lake management, and the stormwater management and wetlands preservation. So we outlined that in my little cover letter here, kind of giving you a feel for who we are. That said, our business is all about showing the RVer the love, creating an environment that is safe for families, where mom can say, David, go out, have a great day, and meet us at the pool at 5 o'clock. Right, and put down your electronics. Yeah. <laughs> put your screens down and go outside and, and, and know that, you, that David will be safe and that David will meet you at the beautiful new pool that we're going to create. And you'll see the pictures of how stunningly beautiful the pool is. And that's what this business is really all about. And if you can do that, you win. And it's a really, it's, it's, a, it's a positive in so many areas for uh, the experience that people have. Everyone knows somebody that RVs. If you don't have one yourself, your friends do. And there's 12 million people that own RVs in the United States and the business is just growing. So fortunately, we figured out what they want. They want a safe, secure environment, clean restrooms, and activities that will knock their socks off. And that's what we're going to build here. Great. It's exciting. Great. It's very, very exciting. All right, well, thank you very much for coming in. We look I forward to working I have two quick you. questions having to do with the prospect that they're going to be presenting. Um, the first one is you talked about water treatment a lot. Scott and Steve, um, because there are going to be RVs traversing the property and there are going to be RVs parking on the property, is there going to be any oil water separation systems? Because we do have RVs, so they are going to drain greases and oils into the substrate. And the substrate, as we've already noted, oftentimes is sand. So are we going to get some oil water separation? I mean, where we're providing catch basins, I would say yes, but where we're not, I would say no. But I did not hear that as part of the presentation. I heard the catch basin part, mm -hmm. but not the old water separator yeah, part. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously where we can provide it, it will be provided. Well, I mean, it's just you know, a simple system like um, Scott, you <coughs> suggested before, what, a vortex system? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or you could similar. do, like, if deep yeah, some we, catch basins, you can put a flare on the yeah, we've got some storm scepter concepts the storm scepter will well. still do the same thing because there are a couple areas that we can't provide treatment i, I discussed at that lower parking lot but what we want to do is there's a there's a, a concrete swale sluice whatever you want to call it. it rips right off the road here don't straight into that little pond right there 
But we want to get as much as we can. We, we can't really mess with this. There's not a lot there to mess with. Um, it's an old box cover, um, probably concrete dressed up with stone, another layer of granite or something on Don't top mess of with it. it. And, you, you can't mess with it. So what we want, we're proposing is to put catch basins in these corners to catch it. And the only treatment I can do with that is some sort of storm scepter or, or vortex unit or something right. like that. So in this plan, if, if uh, you ever take a look at it, there is actually a storm scepter proposed right there. And we're looking at putting one over here at the entrance. So you do so have right storm scepters. Right now that driveway just goes down and just... Your answer to my question is you do have storm scepters or something similar yeah. as part of the plan. Second quick question, what is the source of the water? <coughs> not the source of the excess water, not the source that used to make the petting zoo the mud pit, <laughs> but the source of the drinking water. It is town. town. There is a, it is town the, water. Yeah, this property has town water that comes into a hydrant that's located right over here. Okay. From there it becomes a private system. There's a four inch main that feeds into three. That whole system is also being reworked. That is all part of this plan. There's a new water system along with a new sewer system along with a new electrical system and drainage system. I mean, it's it's you're drinking his Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. He, he's been <laughs> pushing me for a couple of months here, yeah. so it's kind of all right. Well, let's leave it. I hope you will too. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember that that David in. that you just turned loose in the yard. Yes. He's going to find some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he always does, right? Well, you got to you got to put uh, um, a trails maps in your. Uh, brochures yes absolutely because, just remember yeah. that that used to be one of my once a month stops to deliver trail maps <laughs> and we yeah. handed them out. yes you did mm -hmm. yeah. and you handed them out by the dozens well yeah. at some point the grand trunk trail will go right by there too yeah so. it's going to go right by that oh okay well, that'd be a fantastic yeah, yeah. amenity mm -hmm. yeah grand trunk bicycling is gonna, and hiking it's within and, um 500 feet yeah, yeah or yeah. less yeah no, I did my I did my homework and read all about the trail systems here in Sturbridge. It's impressive, yeah. very impressive. Yeah. Key factor in coming here. Great. Well, we, we look forward you. to working with you. Oh. It has we, a... we also donated our, our equipment and resources in the past with Tommy Chamberlain who helped work on all those trails. Yeah, we they, should probably tore up a lot of them with all the work they did and fixed it all, of course, but. We did a lot of work on the trails over there toward the village with yeah. our equipment and trucks and things like that. Yeah, yeah we might also add that last year we had a group of SCA students come in. Ten students came in to do work on the trails for two weeks. And, we put and they put them up. They gave them a, a campsite. And you would not believe the kids. I, kids, they're not kids. They're college students. Every day when they came to work, they said, man, you cannot believe the facilities. that we, We've never had facilities like that. <laughs> so we appreciate that. All thank right, you. Well, thank you very much Great. for coming in. Thanks, thank Tom. You. And this is Kool-Aid, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of blood, sweat. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. We'll see you all on the 19th. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Nine o'clock, okay, for you guys. Make it our first site yeah, visit, you. okay. Yeah. And you, we can pretty much follow each other around in cars. Thanks. And Thanks stop wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. And we can pretty much see all the flags Stay relatively yeah. flat. Yeah. Thank you. I may even yeah. be able to all do right, it. Where, where are we? No. What's next? We can literally drive. Okay. okay. We can see most flags, so it's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Scott. Good. I don't know. Thanks, Scott. What do I got? Letter permits. Well, Bye. Have a good night. Three permits. All right, we're not doing 133rd three. Have a good night. Good night. We're not doing 133 Walker Pond Road. No. Because she can't get out there and flag it, or she might be able to do this weekend. I said I can meet you if needed, so we put it right. off till next time. All right. <laughs> next is uh, 74 Paradise Lane. 74 Paradise Lane was the um, the four trees. Hold on. Oh, I don't have a folder for it. So there was some pictures. This is um, too much paper to take home. That we went on a site visit. We approved three trees on this property yeah. last year, right on the road, dead hemlocks. Yeah. Yeah. This is four additional trees. Three we thought could come down. One would be pruned. One, yeah, the oak would be pruned. Yep, yep. And they're labeled with numbers, so we know yeah. it's number two. We can let him know. I did email um, the property owner applicant, just letting him know that that's probably based off of observations. What? might be um, determined um, and if they wanted to come discuss it to come to the meeting so no response so um, Steve do you want to see the pictures uh, 
They did propose to replant some trees too. Yeah, I'll, he has I, I'll take the, the recommendation of the okay. chair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And one that um, is not that. Right, that we want, that we want just pruned. Right, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. One should be limbed and the other three should be can come down. Yeah. All in favor? Okay, what's next? All right, this is Oaks Cove Road, North Beach. When Walker Palm, we went down there. Remember, yeah. there was an extra tree marked? Yeah. Well, she forgot to include it on here. They want to take that tree down. So we have a... Um, <laughs> all right, so this is right by the water. Right. Um, in 2011, um, we approved... This had five um, trees right. coming out of it. We approved two of them to come down at the yeah. time. Joe had looked at them. He recommended that these two come out. It's rotting near the base. They would like to take these two down, leave this one that's... Leave the one that overhangs yep, the water? Yep, they're going to leave that one. These are the two with... There's some, some rot down here that they'd like to take down. They're concerned it's right next to the beach, and there's a trail that goes by for... Do we have any opinion of what that's going to do to the remaining tree? Yeah, the, the, the whole... Did you see it? No. The, um, it's, it, the ones that, that they, they already took down are big rotted stumps in the middle of the thing. Uh, Seriously rotted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they want to keep the one overhanging the water. I'm happy with that. But the other ones I'd let them take out. Okay. Do you agree with me, David? Absolutely. Yep. Well, I had trouble saying that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how about any replacement? Um, yeah. She didn't. It's all treed. Right. There is all trees. I can pull up the aerial, which would help is a little bit. Is this part of the? Yeah. So this is, so if right over here um, is where those trees are. There's a trail old road that runs through here this house is on the top of that bank but it's all trees all trees along except by the beach good um this one is of the one of the things that will happen though becky when those two trees come out is that tree that's leaning over the water is going to send out more limbs going true. in the opposite true. direction right. um and i'm not I, you know that i'm an advocate i'm not convinced that unless you put the trees right down by the water that you're going to do anything relative to the replacement of those two trees okay yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't mess with it back and the and you already have significant tree growth along the water's yeah. edge yeah okay good um I'm, I'm good so this that. is another additional tree that was looked at by joe at the time and recommended to come down it does have some rot down by the base mm -hmm. um there was actually bark coming off yeah, of yeah that. i can see that right i can there. see there's bark yeah. off yep. of that i would yeah. One thing I just want to note before I forget is that this hillside coming down is maybe, you know, have them leave it and not maintain it. I think people on the opposite property houses here maybe trimming, pruning, cutting, taking things down. Uh -huh. So maybe just kind of remind them that they can't be doing that. I should send a letter out to one person they called, and okay. um, but maybe just to kind of as part of our approval. So you recommend we, we let them take that tree down? I would. Well, yeah. With the rot, I, I would yeah. based on yeah. what right. I'm seeing okay. in the picture. Um, um, yeah, I agree with you, Becky. That we'll make that part of the approval. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a nice reminder too. Yeah. You know, this is another small tree which wasn't on the application. It's leaning over this trail. It looks is it pretty. Is it the one with helped. the X on it? Yes. Remember the other one over yeah, here? Yeah, that one should come out. Should? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, right, you can see it's pretty vegetated back here. We didn't know what the X was for. We didn't know if it was this year or last year or whatever year right. it was. We didn't, yeah, because there was an extra tree mark that wasn't yeah. the application. I didn't see that so. one. Okay, and you can see on this side it's much one more um, on vegetated. Yes. So I think it was just that one property paper. owner that was there. Right. Right. They're right. cutting down so them that's they were, they were three years okay. ago. Okay, all set with that. Saying go ahead, cut it out. You should have cut it down three years ago. You all agree on that? Yes. All in favor? Okay, we have minutes, approval of minutes. I'd like to move we approve the minutes as written. Oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to add one thing. I did um, modify the minutes just a little bit. Um, where's my notes? Now we can't approve them. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I I'll just take changed that back. it in regards to um, our vote on the continued use of the wetlands protection funds for the funding of the admin. And the minutes just didn't say that it was for five hours. Oh. I just changed it to add that because okay. that's important. Um, and I didn't catch I that I believe we one. approved the minutes with the okay. amended that <coughs> made by Rebecca. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Second. All in favor. Yeah, second. All in favor. Great. Um, the only other thing is I had um, forwarded this to you was the um, Otis 
Hip Hip Hooray. Yep. yep. Yeah. Otis Land Management. Yeah, I read it. It's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. I was actually thinking of, well, I was going to wait till the appeal period was over, but sharing it with MACC yeah. so they can have that for other conservation commissions that... Yeah, that's a good idea. You know? Yeah. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Did Leon share... All of them. I tell my husband that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> did Leon uh, pass that on to the selectmen? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I don't know, but I can, yeah. That they should see it, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he was probably going to wait till the appeal period is over, too, but... Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Did did, okay. we, did we cover the old business item, 8 Birch Street, Otis Land Manager? That was this one. That's, that's what we that that Oh, yeah, yeah. okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No. All right. But I think we got everything. If you want to uh, uh, Mr. Chair, make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. <coughs> All in favor? Long night for your first night. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this was a